in deeper than you know. Can they answer this? What's the point of it? Just to reach the heights of love. So I'm pulling the anchor and drifting away. Blinded by reasons beyond just a notch jewel my favorite part the fade i love the fade as we fade in and saint ricketts will fade out all right there all right there it is good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome back 2021 our very first show of the brand new year wow <laughs> i know right it is the one and only the Yo Show. Yo. Yo. I am Jeff the Shark Perini. I have never been more stoked in all my life. A brand new year, a brand new episode, a ton of Funko Pops behind me, and of course, to my right, the co hostess with the mostest, the sister from another mister, and already voted 2021's hottest. Podcaster, the one and only Jewel. Jewel, I can never get it right. <laughs> Jewel Tady, ladies and gentlemen. Jewel, good evening. How are you doing? Good evening, Jeff. How are we doing tonight? I'm excited. Doing... I know you are too. <laughs> I am very excited for tonight. Uh, big thank you to Cassie, the part time intern. Duck is still the intern. Cassie's the part time intern. She brought me a couple. Oh, there we go. We have a bunch of interns tonight. Come on, Glass. <laughs> is, is Duck in the house? Y yep, in the other room, but in the house. <laughs> All right. Queen of the interns, Duck, of course, <laughs> queen of the interns, and back with us for another great season. Tonight, Jewel, so stoked, can't possibly stand it. One of my most absolute favorite people on this planet. The beautiful actress who I've loved since a young teenager. The gorgeous Nancy Valen is oh, our very yeah. special guest. Oh, yeah. That was Nancy during her uh, documentary for Baywatch. She's like, "Use this picture. I like it." We did a lot. Of, we did a lot of chatting the last couple of days. Imagine we chatting have. with Nancy. Now. <laughs> it's almost as great as chatting with my wife. <laughs> Jeff was like, "I can't believe this. I can't believe." This. And I'm like, "Man," <laughs> she said, "What do I want?" So she did not hear me. I put up a neat little pinkish color for tonight too to celebrate Nancy's arrival here on the OSHA. Very nice. Stoke. That's going to come around 8.30 tonight. We're going to do a Nancy Valen interview. Can't wait for that. She's got a new project. She's back in acting. A lot to talk about. Talk about some past stuff, some new stuff, the holidays, the COVID, the whole nine yards. We're going to see how Nancy's coping. Very excited to have her back with us. We're also doing something different tonight, Jewel. This is a first as well. Tonight, we bring out a little group that I like to call the Yo Show Sports Team because it's people that I've been interacting with and watching and following sports with, and they're coming on tonight around 9.15, and we're doing it until it ends. We're doing all six. We're covering the NFL playoffs, Joel Tatey. Ow! Wild card weekend, unlike any wild card weekend ever because this week, Joel, six games, seven teams made the playoffs in each division. One team has a bye, so six teams from each conference, I should say. Six teams from each conference. 
It's going on Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have three awesome people. Christian, Evan, and Ashley will be joining us around 9.15. And Jewel Tatey is going to play moderator. That's I'm right. my best. <laughs> yeah, oh. She's going to try her best. We have another Twitch fan in the house. Hey, Twitchers. We love got, you guys. Yes, yes. A nice bike. I don't know, I don't know who that is, but thank you. Well, I know we got to start learning our Twitchers, Jewel Tatey. Yeah, I mean, they're so, you know, they're so interactive. I love having them. <laughs> I know. You know what I love? I'm so amateur at Twitch. So I feel real special when Twitchers tune in. Because mostly about, like, gaming and all. So when they come to watch us, I get real excited. But, uh, yeah, NFL wildcard uh, prediction segment that's coming on. Folks, uh, we got a lot to get to. Nancy's coming. Don't you worry. <laughs> Where is Nancy? Nancy, if you want to re- <laughs> I know, right? Now. Who's this idiot? Where's Nancy? Nancy will be here around 8.30. Thank you very much, Peter, for tuning in. Work out the nerves. I know, right? I got <laughs> yeah, I got to shake it loose a little bit. Um, it was nice. Nancy's like, do me a favor. Here's my number. Text me in the morning and wake me. And, of course, I break into this cold sweat. Unfortunately, she got to me on Facebook before I got a chance to text her. So, you know. That's insane. I mean, like we've had we've had guests. I mean, that I was a fan of growing up, like you know, Mike crushes or whatever. Yeah. And if one of them said, "Text me in the morning," <laughs> what? Okay. I know, right? So, like in like in my phone, I have a few phone numbers. I got uh, Nancy Valens, of course, which and I don't give these out, God forbid. Nancy Valens, Steve no. Howie, uh, yeah, Steve Madeline, uh, Madeline Zima. Like, oh my God, Madeline Zima called me, and we had like this. Real long conversation before she came back on the show. All right. Not really sure what this dude is saying, but okay. Uh, we are telecasting. Thank you. Uh, the site is called StreamYard, Peter. We are live. Uh, we're right outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, Langhorn is the name of the town. Langhorn, Pennsylvania. We're, uh, we had a studio. We had to, obviously, with COVID, we shut it down. So we moved indoors. StreamYard has been very kind to us. It has helped us connect with each other and guests from all over the world. So thank you for tuning in. Um, you know, it's not 100% flawless. It is the internet, so there might be a skip and a bump here or there, but uh, we do the best we can because this show must go on no matter what. Show must go on. Show must go on. Jewel, good evening. Yo, show mom. It's Alyssa Green, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Thank you for good tuning night. in early tonight. Brian, what's up, y'all? Thanks for getting here early. Brian, good seeing you, dude. Jewel, real quick. Let's get to the top five list. I got so much to talk about. I promise <laughs> people big news at 810. Okay. Um, I'll get to that big news. It's not really that big, but I mean, I it, don't even know it. So it's 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 neat. I don't press. It is out. Uh, the top five list here. It is most lovable characters. Now, not there's who I'm in love with you, but lovable people you liked um, in movies and um, TV. Movies or TV? I'm going to start. I have it looks like two movie and two TV. Uh, wait, two movie, three TV. I don't know what the hell I got. Anyway, let's start out at number five. And any guy who's seen this movie, Ray Coleman, how's it going, my good dude? Um, I, don't know this, I don't know what this dude's saying. Probably. <laughs> uh, he's in Facebook jail, so he's got a comment on YouTube. But thanks for watching. He, like, he makes his way to us. Yo, come on YouTube. It's actually better for us if you watch on YouTube, all of our Facebook friends. <laughs> Brian said Britney Spears is not a character. She is in my own mental pornography movie. But... um. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Anyway, top five, number five, Mona Lisa Vito from My Cousin Vinny, played by Marissa Tomei. Oh, you know, just like, watch that. <laughs> she she was her character was kind of hard, but oh, no, like I loved her. Her accent, the whole nine yards, terrific. It's a trick question. <laughs> it's a bullshit question. Oh, I got it wrong. I, got, I suck. <laughs> This now I love this. He doesn't understand us, but he's listening. Thanks, dude. That's great. <laughs> um, number four from Guardians of the Galaxy, the lovable Groot. Aww. Oh, everybody loves Groot. I've decided against it. Love Groot. I have. Oh, look. Wait. Don't go on. Look, Groot. Yeah, I have a little Groot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, everybody loves Groot. <laughs> this guy's from Turkey. Wow, so where's Turkey? Oh, wow. Turkey. Wow, thank you, Turkey. Thank number you. three. Number three from the Wonder Years, the adorable Winnie Cooper. Uh, Winnie Cooper was so cute. Oh, you know, was cool too. They were so cute together. They were. Kevin had they had kind of a rocky ending, but Kevin was cute. Number two, speaking of cute, one of the absolute cutest, the girl that everybody loved. It was Topanga from Boy Meets World. 
played by Daniel Fisher. Everybody loved Topanga. And number one, maybe I'm butt kissing, but it's true. She is our guest tonight, and of course, it is from the movie Lover Boy. The character Jenny, huh, the girlfriend that every guy wanted in the eighties. Ultimate girlfriend. The ultimate oh. girlfriend, mm -hmm. Jenny from Lover Boy, played by tonight's guest Nancy Valen. So cute. <laughs> so cute. I'm like oh. red. I'm like blush. I got a sweater on. <laughs> Jewel Teddy, your top five most lovable characters that, ever. That went quick. And uh, when I was thinking lovable, I was thinking like, well, they can't have like a bad motive. So I was looking for people with good hearts. So that's what this list is all about. Um, number five, Arya Stark, Game of Thrones. I mean, everyone loves Arya. There's not a bad thing about her. She's a badass, but she has an excellent heart. And she's just you know, the hero and threw it out throughout that whole show. Uh, number four, I know you don't know this show, but the amazing world of Gumball has this little fish, Darwin, and he is the cutest, sweetest character. Oh my God. Mm. He's so cute. And like, the thing is his um, owner was a cat and he loved him so much that he grew legs and was like his buddy. So he got to go to school with them. So Darwin, number four, uh, number three, the new girl, Jessica Day. Who doesn't love Zoe uh, Deschanel? Uh, I love her so uh, much. Um, love. Yeah, she's so funny. And she she just doesn't have a bad bone in her body. Uh, number two, another one who's um, actually a monk, so he's peaceful. He really doesn't have a bad bone in his body. He can't even, like, do his job because he's supposed to kill the bad guy. But he can't because he's a monk and he's peaceful. Is Aang from The Last Airbender. He's so sweet and funny and i love that show i love him and number one who doesn't love this gal the most lovable i love lucy lucy ricardo oh that's adorable i love that i love lucy she's my favorite i grew up watching that show with nick and knight summer block party i love lucy wow that's really great that is a great list um I had some other people that was i was on the friends um like if you ever watched uh, everybody loves raymond um, the mom. Oh, yeah. No, 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 not the mom. Because oh. the mom was kind of mean. Uh, the, the Amy, <laughs> Amy, the brother's quirky wife. Like, oh, I didn't watch. She it was like always so cute. Um, I love okay. the mom, Doris. What's her name? Doris. Um, Ray was it? I was gonna go with Sophia from the Golden Girls. That would have been good. Um, I almost went with Young Jake from Two and a Half Men. Who didn't love Young Jake? Like Young Jake was great. <laughs> Um, so there's a lot of them, but a great list. Let's rehash them real quick for you. Mine, number five, Mona Lisa Vito. Number four, Groot. Number three, Winnie Cooper. Number two, Topanga. Number one, <sighs> Jenny from Loverboy. Just, I hated Patrick Dempsey the way he treated her in college. Rotten! <laughs> ah, here we go from uh, When Worlds Fail Music Speaks. Our man who just celebrated a birthday last night. Happy birthday. So happy birthday to you, of course. Uh, hold on one second. I didn't forget you. I just got to get something out of my way here. Um, make sure. Okay. Did not mess up. Anyway, James Cox uh, is the uh, host and creator of the podcast When Worlds Fail Music Speaks. He was one of the guys that did the Hot Pepper Challenge with me. Yesterday was his birthday. So happy birthday from us here at the Yosho. Promised I'd shout him out. I almost put him all the way back in like the 930 segment. So I'm glad he's here. Happy birthday to James. Good dude. Good show. We were talking about guests that we're hunting. And we're going to hunt guests together. We got more great guests coming up later with Jewel. I'm sorry, Jewel's top five of us. And we've got Arya Stark, uh, Darwin, Jessica Day, Ng, and Lucia Ricardo. Ang. Ang. Ang? Ang. Ang. A A N G. <laughs> A A N G. Ang. I thought it was Ang. Okay. Ang. Anyway. <laughs> so here it comes. The news you have all waited for. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. It is the return of MySpace. What? Oh. You're saying it, Joel Tate. It's now under the new name of Space Hey, but it is MySpace. Created for a new generation. There's me, Jeff the Shark. It's a picture of me and my nephew. It is back. 
Oh, somebody, somebody has purchased the format and has brought it back. Evan Horn will be on our show later this evening. Get them fix ready. Wait, wait a minute. It's back. Somebody no, knew. That's it's not, not the MySpace I know. I know the colorful backgrounds and the music playing when you hit it's, a profile. It's all gonna. Ha- it's all gonna happen. It's new. A lot of kinks are being worked out. I've got five friends already. And I'll show you how I know it's going to go back to the norm. Because this one guy I'm friends with doesn't know I'm promoting him or anything. Um, but his profile name is Yosemite Grams. And look at his. Like, he's flashy. He's got videos, music. Yeah, they, they were the good profiles. It's coming back to the days of old, folks. It's coming back. MySpace and a new name of Space Hey. Yo, something has to be better. I am so sick of Facebook. I know, right? Uh, will it be like it used to be? Good question, Stephanie. I just discovered today uh, our good friend Amber Stewart, who works over at Murphy's, and uh, she was at the Halloween party and on our show. Uh, she saw it today. And I'm like, I'm getting it. Space wow. Hay. Space Hay. Space Hay. Follow me at Snowman in the house. <laughs> the snowman. Brian Snow got his picks. Dude, you could chime in on the side. I got a big panel coming on tonight. <laughs> I'll drop yours in if you like. Um, now, I heard, Stephanie, it's not as slow. I heard it's actually revamped, but a lot of features aren't available yet, like instant message, downloading pictures, stuff like that is coming. And it's not Tom anymore. It's somebody named Ann, A-N, who's who's running it. No. Need, to, need to pick my top eight. There's going to be a Yosho page, remember. Get them in your top eight. The number one. Yes, absolutely. One on the way. But, you know, I don't get it because Facebook, it seems like every social media site that comes out, Facebook buys. Like, they bought Instagram. What is this? <laughs> hey, Facebook can buy the Yo Show whenever they want. Hand over millions of dollars, and Jewel and I will call it something else. I'm and just do saying. It, can it compete, it though? Island. I don't know. I don't know if it can. But it, And what a lot of people are saying already is that they're curious to get involved because enough of the politics and the arguing and the the – Debating, but people debate about everything and argue about everything just to argue. It, it's getting old. Bring me back something wholesome where I could see a, a funny link, a funny click, something like that. You know what I would like to? I would like. Um, We'd like that, Brian. I know they have separate, like separate fan pages, and then ones for just your friends and your family. I know you can do that, but it takes a while to like siphon that stuff through. Yeah, I'm not I would sure. Like to just, <laughs> <laughs> go along that path because now the show's getting bigger like i don't know like it's hard to <laughs> post anything but if you know i don't know maybe uh-huh. there's ways to do it i'm just a novice but <laughs> yes it's back but yeah so like it was news i've been waiting to tell all day since i saw it and i saw yeah. it and i got right on it and um i said to amber i'm like add me i want to be like i want to be somebody's friend and i got five friends now the return <laughs> space hey Space Hey, H E Y, the return of MySpace, if you will. The O Show, breaking that news to you. I made this big breaking story, and there wow. it is. Tonight, There's a lot of stuff that happened, news and celebrity wise, this week. Hey, Kenny. Kenny Sheffield, ladies and gentlemen, from, of course, St. Ricketts with our theme song, With Fire Cannot Burn. I'm ready for a big 2021. Kenny, welcome back. Uh, always great seeing you. The 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 classic Kenny Three Flames. We love it. It's awesome, dude. Uh, yeah, but I, I mean, there was so much news in the world, crazy stuff. I'm going to try hitting it real quick before Nancy Valen comes on with us. And uh, the first one, Jewel, was the on again, off again, on again. Death of Tanya Roberts. I mean, Tanya Roberts did officially pass away at age 65 years old. You remember from Charlie's Angels and, uh, of course, that 70s show. She was Donna's mom. Oh, I loved her on that show. But, yeah, apparently uh, official. But it was reported by her boyfriend. And then it was false. And then it happened again. And then CNN said it was false again. And now it happened. That's just so sad. I mean, I know this stuff happens all the time. Like, I know my friend's friend's uncle, you know, he he died three times in one day. But as a celebrity, people have to report and to put that news out there and, and for her family to go through that. Maybe they haven't been in touch and to hear it and then not hear it. Oh, man, I just you have to respect if you don't know 
for a fact. I mean, I don't know what happened in the house at all, but that is so, oh, that's just sad. It's so sad. And she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. So, such a, I, I watch that 70s show all the time. She's so funny and cute. And that, that's just so, so sad. It really is. And something I had mentioned to a few people in the past, we had, I actually had contact with Tanya's PR people. And they said, sure. A uh, few months down the line, this was about a year ago. And they said, a few months down the line, we'll look into it and try to get back to you with Tanya, which would have been great. Yeah. Rest in peace. One of our, we lost Dawn Wells. We lost Tanya Roberts. We're losing these beautiful women. I can't handle it, Joel Tatey. Uh, we almost lost another great one. And um, I don't know if I got a link for it. Stop. Why am I echoing? I'm gonna Why am I echoing tonight? Uh, I don't have, hmm. uh, you know, it came up so fast last night after I did the whole show that uh, legendary rap rapper and producer Dr. Dre had a brain aneurysm, Joel. Oh. This one hit me. I am such, I mean, everyone knows I'm a huge Eminem fan, but Dr. Dre, I'm such a fan. And uh, he's so young, you know, he's, he's in his 50s and <sighs> wish him, no, I, I mean, he made it, he made it to the hospital. He made posts. Ice-T actually put out a post that Dre texted him and said he was okay. So that's like great. If you have an aneurysm and you can pass that point, I heard, then, then. I mean, it's a long road to recovery, but pretty much it, 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 I heard it hits you right away or like yeah. it's, it's a long road. So wish Dre the best. I love Dr. Dre so much. <sighs> Praying for his beautiful wife and his kids. I love Dre. Yeah, that was that was a tough one. And, you know, still some people because last night somebody's like, you know, Dr. Dre is next. And people were like, oh, he's not even dead, idiot. He had a brain injury. It's like, stop being that way. Come on. I actually did know when, when you told me last night. I didn't know which Dr. Dre. Are you talking about Dr. Dre from UOMTV Raps that we had on that was yeah. phenomenal? That was or great. the legendary Dr. Dre? And it's just like, I don't, I don't, they're, they're both important to me. So, I don't, you know, it was so, I, I, I mean, I went on and I, there's a song. It's called I Need a Doctor. It's one of his more. Yes. But you know what I said to my niece because I I made her listen to Eminem the whole time growing up and Dr. Dre and all this. Okay. And uh, she's like, I, I was talking to her. I'm like, man, he has to stop doing this. Like Eminem had Proof die in one of his videos, and then Eminem had Dr. Dre die. And, stop, M. I know, right? Jeez, bad omen. You don't do, don't do that in your videos. You might be all, you know, but. So oh. freaks me out to this day that like um like actual Rose dies in November rain. Like, right. what the hell's that? Oh no, wait, she dies. She dies, right? She she yes, she does. She does. Still. Yeah. Don't buy in videos. I know it looks cool and stuff, but W actual Rose, ladies and gentlemen, in Funko Pop 4. Uh, <laughs> love me some guns and roses. Like I put that banner up by that guns and roses banner is up there in the corner. I love it. Um, let's give some good news. Anybody out there watching? Get ready for good news. I'm going to make your 2021. PBS has canceled Caillou. Woo! Yeah! I'm just a kid who's 14. Then I learned some more. I love exploring out Caillou. This song slapped. Growing <laughs> up is not the top sip of pain I've had enough. Keep staying there. Hang on. Caillou. Yeah, that song was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest crybaby in the history of TV. Stephanie is out there with her big, yay, tell me about it. The news could not get any better. I saw it. I'm like, that's fine. My good news. The annoying, little, the annoying little brat with the bald head who never ages and never grows hair. The bratty Caillou. Eddie! Oh, my. I mean, my nephews and nieces watched that. And when I had Joey, I'm like, you are not watching Caillou. He's a little brat. You don't need to learn from him. You're right oh. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Daddy, that's not fair. Okay, yeah. for you. Oh, we'll my God. Do whatever you want. His parents kissed his ass. That's not fair. Let's go show you how far back Caillou goes. Now, we spoke a few weeks back about my ex who had passed away, unfortunately. Uh, she had children, and at the time, her little daughter was like three or four years old and would watch Caillou. So, been around a while. Freaking not anymore, Caillou. sucker. Out of here. Caillou gone. Uh, more things gone that are uh, possibly shocking. And, and Jewel gave me a little more feed on the story. It's alleged, though. Kim and Kanye are considering divorce. Jewel Tady. If this is a reek of 
New beginnings yeah. in 2021. Come here, I need that. I need that meme. <laughs> we need Duck the intern, ladies and gentlemen. Intern. The greatest, the greatest Wait, intern. Me. Okay, so here's the deal. First of all, they are getting divorced, and Kim is already reportedly dating what's his name? Van Jones from CNN. Van Johnson? Van Jones, right? <laughs> Johnson? Good. Van Whatever. Johnson is an actor from eons ago. Oh, yeah, because, uh, you know, she's doing that all that prison reform, which is great. I mean, so she met him through that. And Kanye is reportedly, <laughs> reportedly seeing Jeffree Star. <laughs> you know Jeffree Star is? Jeffree Star? He's a makeup artist. He's beautiful. Kanye's dating a dude? Yeah, uh, supposedly. Allegedly. Really? So these are, the, these are the memes. It's like Chris Jenner creating a new Kanye rumor. <laughs> wait, and then here's Jeffrey, and it looks just like it. Wait. <laughs> it's like Jeffrey start Jeffrey start finding out that Kim knows. And it's <laughs> <laughs> he's a makeup artist with this long blonde hair. That is, oh man, wow. it's so funny. That is great, great stuff. Oh, yeah, wild, wild. We're going to um, keep Rusty up with Rain. that story. <laughs> What's up, Rusty Reigns? Earl, as he's known as. Looks like somebody's in oh. Facebook, you know, because he's watching us on YouTube. Interesting. <laughs> oh, wait, Rusty is Earl? Earl is, Earl was on the Christmas show. He's Rusty, Rusty Reigns. Is that he's different? Got, that's his alias. Oh, Earl okay. And Rusty is too. <laughs> Welcome all. Holy Jesus. <laughs> you know, I, I always see as we each week new loves and new likes, and new thumbs up from new people watching. So, like, hello to, well, some of the regular people. My man, Pat McConney. What's up, Pat? What? Brian, yeah. the snowman, snow with a thumbs up. Of course, the snowman in the morning. Great sports podcast. Jody Valentine gave us a little like. She's been checking us out. Maria Daniels. Maria, thank you for tuning in. A great podcaster in her own right. Maria, outstanding. Uh, Kathy Hartman. Oskowiak, I think I said that right. Remember her from the great charity of False Rangers on Earth. Marissa Zavala. I've been friends with Marissa forever. I love her. Thanks for tuning in. Patty Hartman. Of course, Alyssa Green. Kyle Seifer. Thank you, everybody. And a uh, laughy face from Stephanie. <laughs> I guess about <laughs> Nicole Troy. I see you in your house. Thank you for tuning in as well. Um, Rusty is good, dude. Uh, she said she couldn't miss the beard. I am. So if I actually combed Wait, it. You're funny. <laughs> I've got like I've got like hairspray in it tonight to hold it. I mean, it's Nancy Valen tonight. I'm like I'm so nervous. I want Maria on the show. Can she come on? <laughs> Maria, yeah, we will invite Maria on the show. Absolutely. We had Tina Trimpert on the show before. We have a uh, another great podcast coming on with us in March. So uh, absolutely, we will make time for Maria as long as. Uh, she wants to join us. She is welcome. Uh, we are expecting Nancy Valen, hopefully within the next minute or two. Hate to see a grown man cry live on the air. <laughs> like Jules said, it's archived. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, you might not remember what happened the day you've seen it. You're always going to remember. Look at that idiot with the long beard crying like a child. <laughs> Boy, it does. Oh, Maria, um, yeah, Maria said, yes, let's do it. I'll check the schedule. We are uh, booking now for March. So, yeah, we'll get you on in uh, in March. We love it. Um, I love informative podcasters, people that love this trait. You know, Jewel, it's kind of funny. Uh, a few people, uh -oh, we might have, all right, small issue. That was a text from Nancy Valen. I'm so excited. A um, little bit of an issue with the link, but she is doing some download stuff now. There's, uh, should be coming on with us shortly. Thank you for the smile. Um, but yeah, so let's not see a grown man cry. We've got an angry face. Angry face. So of course, we know who that's from. None other than Sharon Tatey. Thank you for the angry face. <laughs> 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 Love the Tatties and her angry faces. Uh, Maria's going to be 29 again in March. Wow. That's, congratulations. Me too. In a couple weeks. 29. Right. 29 <laughs> again. Uh, you have a um, you, have, you have a birthday gift coming in the mail from one of our upcoming guests who is sending you a copy for a brand new book. We'll talk about that later. Oh. I'm getting books. I love merchandise from people. Call me a whore, but I love merchandise. Oh, wow. I have to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do that later. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about um, 
who's coming on the show. We might actually cook until 11 tonight because the football stuff's going to take a while, but 10, 30, 11, just stick with us. We're, we're going to keep bringing in great guys. I, I tell Drew. Yeah, it's a good thing to do, but you know, <laughs> yeah. life goes on real quickly. Um, as we wait for Nancy Valen to uh, hopefully download, it's usually not that way. It's just having a browser issue, which stinks. Um, I got a little kiss from Maria Daniels. All right, folks, time for Jeff to take a five minute break. <laughs> Kidding, sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, happy birthday, Maria, Aww. from Let's Agree. I'm a merch whore, Maria. There was no lie about it. It's going to be my new name from Jeff the Shark to Jeff the Merch Whore. <laughs> Earl Re now he's Earl Reigns, so he's both Earl and Rusty Reigns, and he's in an nice. all press, and he's with us. Uh, Derek. Coons in the house. Derek's up. Happy New Year. It's almost hockey time again, dude. Next week. Back for some more hockey. Very excited about that. Speaking of hockey, uh, a promotion to one of our longtime guests and has now been named the Yo Show Sports Director. Congratulations to our man, Mark Zamaro. Mark, of course, is our uh, resident hockey genius and has now been appointed sports director here at the Yosho. I uh, text him, told him the salary, and he said that's about as much as I'm making now. So uh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, can't wait. Let's go devils. You know, these sacrilegious people to come on our, our program. I'll let you have it. Derek has always been a diehard devils fan as long as I've known him. So I'll let him have you it. Are in Jersey? No, he lives here in PA. <laughs> oh, then I can't respect that. <laughs> Joe Konzelman, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Joe and I are usually on the opposite end of political discussion, but he's a good dude. I love Joe. Known Joe a long time. So thanks for tuning in, Joe. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah, Devils, get out of here. Tell him, Steph. Steph is a diehard Flyers fan. Um, so I'm psyched up for some hockey. Nancy Vallon, in a few moments, ladies and gentlemen, I know you're tuning in. She'll be here shortly. A little bit of technical difficulty she's working through right now. Jen Himes in the house. Good evening, Jen. Thank you for joining us. Nancy will be on shortly, Peter. Have no fear. She just texted me and said that you had a little Chrome download issue, but it's coming on and she'll be here shortly. I'll keep you posted if she texts me and continues to have issues. Uh, we'll keep the folks posted. Stay tight. We've had Nancy before on our old format uh, when we were at Blog Talk Radio and just so charming. I listened to that episode again. I know Jewel did too. I did. It Obviously, this one is going to go much better. Yes. <laughs> I'm so excited for her return and, uh, you know, for you to just ask her some questions because, I mean, it's, 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 it's tough, you know, finding, finding guests and finding, finding great guests and Jeff always puts in the work and I'm so happy that, you know, he has the opportunity and we have the opportunity to have her on our show and, um, yeah, I just think that this is great. It's just come full circle. I mean, years, years in the making, would you say? I would say, uh, definitely. And it's funny because um, you find, we find these guests through a bunch of different portals, obviously. Um, right. I am IMDB and their agents are listed. So you got to go to the agents a lot of times, which is tough because sometimes you think the agents don't even check the email or they check and it's like, meh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sometimes Instagram. Sometimes Facebook, and I found Nancy on Facebook. I'm like, could this be actually like the Nancy Valen? I think I asked her that way back when. I'm like, this is really Nancy Valen? And the fact that she didn't say no jackass <laughs> was pretty great. But I, you know, and she answered and I mentioned in the show. And then my former partner reached out to her again. She finally agreed to do it. And it was great. The audio was terrible back then. Jewel. Yeah, all the crackling and scratching. It sounded like we were in an alley. Or something. We sound great tonight. It's going to be a great night. I'm so excited. And she'll be here in a few minutes. So, woosa. <laughs> woosa. If she won't be here, I certainly hope she texts me again. I don't want her to have difficulties. Because, like, I was telling her how great this is. And it's so much better than the last time. We're going to be able to <laughs> see each other and just click a link and you're there. And <sighs> Yeah, Joel A. Schechter. Come join us. Wherever you are. I'm calling you out. I don't even know who you are, but I'm calling you out. <laughs> Jewel, oh my goodness. There it is, the face. She's popped up backstage. This is a moment I have waited for. Anybody who has been a movie or TV fan in the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and today has got to know this face. My brother even said today, my brother's like, oh my God, lover boy. Like, he remembered today. He's like, oh my God. 
So I'm sure he's tuning in tonight because we all get so excited. One of the um, one of the best actresses and just the sweetest people, somebody I've always loved dearly, and she's joining us tonight. The one and only Nancy Valen, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, guys. Hello. Well, thanks so much for having me. It's so sweet of you guys to think of me. Oh, thank you. You look great. Um, uh, Jewel, take over. I'm speechless. <laughs> I don't know what this. No, I'm kidding. Um, I am very excited, though, Nancy. I, I've been a giant fan forever. I have seen you in so many great things, and I, you know, we had a top five list tonight of most lovable characters in TV and movie history ever. And of course, number one is Jenny from Loverboy. I just my favorite. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a fun movie. So Jeff, you you said that you were a fan. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that really. Um, oh. Thank you for that. Thank you for watching. I have to appreciate that. And then Jewel, I just have to say your hair is just stunning. Look at you. Oh, your hair. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It, looks so, it looks so pin up. I love the curls. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, we always want what we don't have, I guess. Um, <laughs> Anyway, We're actually, hair yes. is really curly. It, it takes a long time to straighten this. To straighten it out, right? You have a lot of it. You're blessed, totally blessed. But um, yeah, I'm so glad to be here. Jenny was such a great um, part to play. Um, you know, it was interesting. I guess they had a, another girl cast in the part, and I guess the chemistry wasn't right. And I went in at the last minute after they already started shooting, and I read with Patrick. And I guess you know the chemistry was just there. It just felt easy and fun. And um, and I'm so grateful that I got a chance to do that movie to work with Joan Micklin Silver. Did you hear that she passed away? Yes, very sorry about that. Tough news to hear, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, Crossing Delancey was, uh, you know, phenomenal film and it, it was interesting. I, You know, it's, it's terrible, right? Sometimes we wait until someone dies to really learn more about them. Um, but I'm so glad that I that I looked her up and really, you know, saw what she fought through, the challenges that she had, the adversity that she faced when she was trying to get those films done. And it's really applicable to today um, where people were saying that her films were too ethnic. Um, and, and I guess probably why she chose, um, she did a lot centered on uh, Russian Jews um, that came to America at a certain time. So she, you know, in the 1800s, so she, um, I wonder if that's really, you know, she made that pivot to go and do something like Lover Boy so commercially um, viable, you know, I guess at that time. Possibly, yeah, to kind of kind of change the course a little bit, because I think we talked about it last time a little bit. You joined us a few years back. The chemistry of the movie, the cast, the story, it's a, it's like the cutest movie besides, I mean, the extra ranch movie thing, but other than that, just like an adorable <laughs> movie. And it had to be so fun to make. Now I noticed one thing about you um, and looking at, you know, your social media and all that, you seem to always build a great bond with your cast members and people you have performed with. Is that something that you feel makes it more comfortable to, to get kind of a camaraderie with, with fellow actors, actresses? You mean people, hi, Peter. Um, <laughs> he's, been he's been waiting. He's been waiting for you all night. <laughs> oh, hi. And so, oh, thank you. That's so sweet. It just paid me the nicest compliment. I guess someone else was here before, but I didn't, I don't know if I said hi. But um, I love, you mean afterward, afterward, or, you know what? It's, it's right now, it's wonderful, to, you know, today, because as soon as we do a job, we all, you know, friend each other, you know, follow each other on Instagram. And then, you know, we will help, um, to, you know, uh, elevate the other person, you know, and, and get the word out about them. Um, and usually the people are just incredible, you're phenomenal, and you want to do that anyway. Um, just naturally, you would do it. Um, and then, yes, I love staying in touch with cast members um, from back in the day. It really just warms my heart. It's fulfilling. And, um, you know, there's so many cast members that I do still do stay in touch with there are so many that i've never seen since doesn't mean that i don't think about them you know sure well, most people i have completely fond memories of the um did you so, stay in touch i'm sorry and i hope they have fond memories of me right you never have <laughs> well, i was gonna say real quickly because some of the names are like it's amazing because some of the names are like my favorite people and uh, like betsy russell we've had on the show before oh, um, yes. she was my sister-in-law she was married to my uh, husband's brother yeah i saw that which i didn't know she was with us in the past uh, eileen davidson who we love i had donna yeah. you know, just said great people so that's terrific jewel i'm sorry to cut you off go ahead and ask away you have to have just you know eileen uh, uh, you know, married my um, 
my uh, husband's brother and what an incredible blessing and you know addition to our family so that's been fun i absolutely love donna um you know we've seen each other a bit we sometimes you know talk with each other through social media she looks exactly the same i know she's the her through to you do too yeah you do. <laughs> she's just so beautiful and then you know from um baywatch there's so many cast members that i still talk to but i think we might have talked about this before so yasmin bleef um and i worked on ryan's hope together back right. i will not mention the year um, <laughs> and uh you know we were still teenagers at the time um and uh you know we ended up being roommates and best of friends and you know she's been family for me so um, it was it was fun, although we did work together, but I, I don't think we actually had that many scenes. I think we had like two scenes uh, together. So although we were on the same show, we didn't do that much together on the show. You know, that's still incredible. And I know social media makes it so much easier to keep those contacts. But you guys are like the team. So it's cool that you, you continue to stay friends. Um, did you keep close contact with Patrick Dempsey? I never did. No. Um, you know, he's. Got a blessed career, so happy for him. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's just incredible, so busy, went on, you know, to do the next thing. Um, That's cool, though. I love to see his physical transformation, I must say. I mean, if you guys go back, <laughs> and you look, like any boy out there that is thinking, what can I do about my skinny arms? Just go look at Patrick Dempsey's before <laughs> photo. And clearly, like when I worked with him, he had the body of a nine year old child. And I'm like, <laughs> he's really yeah, scary. Okay, She's so sweet. Um, we do a lot. She's a lot on social media, Michaela. But um, anyway, um, and uh, she's in my nutrition company as well. Um, okay. And you know that I think Michaela probably goes, that's not true, but I, I think Michaela was, you know, it, it liked my work at the time and reached out to me and, you know, we became friends um, after that. So thank you, Michaela, for, um, you know, your loyalty there all these years. I appreciate that so much. And she's just amazing. But, um, yeah, so he was incredible uh, to work with, even though he had that skinny body, right? And yeah. he had, you know, I guess he got into a fight um, on a mobsters movie where he had a fight yes. scene, and I guess he got his nose broken. So that went through a little transformation as well. Um, and, you know, if you look back at that movie, it, the thing that I love about it is it doesn't matter. He had so much charisma. Yes. He was just like, and it just oozed out of him. When he walked in the room, he just disturbed the air, you know? Um, and I think even Kirstie Alley uh, talked about that as well. Just his charisma was phenomenal. Because really. in the movie, um, at least early on, not a lot of the guys liked Patrick Dempsey and nobody liked Jury because they were jerks to Jenny. <laughs> you know, I, I wonder what would... That movie, first of all, today would never get made, right? No. You know, you'd never have the, the lead character guy, me, going, but you slept with all those women. And I think he's like, you know, like, it wasn't like that. I mean, I tried to do my best to give them what they wanted. I, yeah. did, I, did, it, I did it for you, I think was the line he yeah. said. I remember, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I did it for you. I mean, it's actually a really sweet scene. I, I went and watched it the other day. I was thinking of putting like a little blurb of it up, and I probably will, um, maybe after this or tomorrow or something but uh but yeah you know look it's that coming of age movie I, you know in a way um and what a dream for every guy right that guy that's yeah. a little bit awkward and um you know and then he goes through that like with all these women telling him how to be suave and charming and what he needs to do and you know so i guess they did all that work so jenny could you know get the benefits of it so that's the exactly. thing like that. that's the moral of the story yes I don't think my wife would buy that right now, but okay. <laughs> Honey, I interviewed Nancy Valen for you so I can right. learn how to speak to you. Uh, but you did take a little bit of an acting hiatus. Um, you, know, you, know, said, you got into nutrition, which was great, and you're still doing great work with that. We took a little break. Uh, what made you break, and then what made you come back? Sure. Um, right now, or did you say we're taking a break? I know. What, what made you take a break? What made you take a break and what made you come back? Yeah. So first, um, I, I, first I transitioned into producing and I didn't mean to let the acting go, but I'm, I will just admit, I am a terrible multitasker. So once I get some, get excited about something, you know, when something 
it's that combination of just a feeling that maybe I could do this thing and curiosity and just, are you up for the challenge? You know, and if someone says the odds are small, I get more excited. I'm like, okay, bring it on. Let's do this. <laughs> um, so when, when a, a director approached me about getting rights, uh, life rights to um, some, I think it was the Baywatch cast members that he started with. And then, you know, we just went from there and I ended up uh, really launching his company with him and partnering with him. Um, and I just, it was just, it was just like, you know, you can apply it to anything in life, right? Like how many scary phone calls can I make today? And it's that, you know, do you ever have that feeling when you're like working out and you're really sweating? You're like, I don't know if I could do this, but you just start laughing. You know? Oh, yeah. Was, yeah, sadly, I do know that. I'm laughing yeah. at myself. Right? This is good pain. <laughs> this is great pain, you know. Um, and, you know, when you challenge yourself. So I just kind of got addicted to that. Um, and I loved and then I just learned really, you know, a lot of aspects of production. I It was really wonderful for me. It was, um, you know, I could combine I was kind of, you know, combine what I knew from actors because I knew that world. And then for some reason, I was also comfortable on the other side. And bringing those two together, a lot of times, I don't know if this is too heady for people, or I don't even know if it's heady, but um, but if anyone's interested, but, you know, a lot of times, like, actors will kind of be on one side. Maybe this has gone away years ago. Um, but actors used to be kind of on one side, and then the suits were kind of on the other. And sometimes there were clashes there, right? Oh, okay. Um, and really just kind of opening up that, you know, that bridge. Um, and then really looking at an actor and, and creating something for that actor and then solving, you know, how is something's gonna sell. Anyway, sorry, I'm talking too much, but it was a really, really wonderful time for me. I learned a lot and it was fantastic to get some shows made. I did uh, Chasing Pharaoh with Farrah Fawcett for TV. Yeah. Um, and uh, we did uh, Shatner in Concert, William Shatner. Um, it was Windmill Entertainment, by the way, the production company. Um, and then we did uh, the pilot episode of TV Land with my father-in-law, Dick Van Patten. And yeah. then we had so many different shows set up. And then I went off and did stuff on my own, um, which was a blast. And then um, for me, I stepped away from that. I was trying to have a baby, which never worked out, but everything oh, okay. for a reason. Yeah. Um, you know, for anyone out there, you guys, if you've gone through it, just, you know. It, it can be challenging. I never imagined that it would be that challenging, but it was mentally extremely challenging time. Um, and then, you know, when I emerged from that, I just wanted a little, you know, positivity, safety, and I wanted to really work with people. But you guys, I was ruined for like a nine to five. I never had a real job in my sure. life. Yeah, it's, it's um, a whole different world. Yeah. And so, um, you know, being more of an entrepreneur, it made sense to me and helping people, you know, and connecting with them. And, and we still have that, right? I've stepped away as really leading that team, but um, I have two gals that are incredible. Um, and sorry, I'll do the shameless plug, but if anyone um, is looking for, you know, any solutions with nutrition, um, they can reach out to me on Facebook on either page. And then I have an incredible um, assistant, Mandy, who will get back to them and then put them in touch with one of the gals on my team who will take great care of them. And then if they want, they can get into our private Facebook group that I'm in all the time and uh, do our challenge. We have a challenge that's coming up toward the um, end of uh, the month. So they still have time to get into that if they feel like losing, you know, 5, 10, 15 pounds a month. Sounds great. <laughs> My birthday's at the end of the month. I definitely need that. Um, you should join us. You would love it. Oh, I'm sure I would. Yes, I'm going to hit you up about that. Um, but, you know, I, I love that you dabble in so many different things because, you know, just being an artistic type, I, I'm, I'm the same way. You know, you need a little variety. Um, yeah. But how has the last year treated you? I know you have the beautiful setup. I saw it on your Instagram. You had the whole setup for auditions and stuff. Have you had... Right. <laughs> many auditions this year yes so, um, gosh i do have to say it was bumpy road definitely coming back um first of all you know you just have the work aspect and i thought oh, i'm more confident now you know um at this point in my life and oh my gosh it's it's so doesn't apply <laughs> <It's> <laughs> where you really are um again so you know i got into class and um just really just wanted to you know bring something to the table, right? Just uh, provide value in some way if I could um, to it, to whatever story it was, right? Whatever film or television um, project it was. Um, and then I ended up, you know, I booked some things, which I was shocked. I thought, will I be able to get an agent? You know, and gratefully I did. And, you know, luckily I did. And then, you know, will I ever book anything again? And so, um, yes, while it's been a challenge, the whole technical side of it's a whole other thing that took me yeah. a while. 
It's really because of COVID, right? Some good things yeah. <laughs> have come out of it and forced me to do the home setup and, you know, just tackle that technical, you know, aspect. But in terms of COVID, I'm so sorry if anyone's lost someone. Um, I, I've had friends that have been lost family members um, or friends and, um, you know, some really trying times. And I'd like to say the positive part of me says, it's great, I don't have to go on that many, you know, uh, we don't have to make that many dinner parties or, you know, like get together with that many friends, right? Go to, you know, whatever, um, you know, but and the truth of the matter is it, it can be isolating for sure. sure. Um, and, and I am fortunate enough not to have to worry, right? Where the next meal is coming from or, you know, all of that. So. Um, I just feel for the people out there and, and hopefully this soon shall pass, like my mother used to say. Mm, totally agreed. And, you know, there's been some unfortunate stories for that. Uh, we've had people on both ends of the spectrum. Some said it's helped them be more creative. Some people said it's actually shut them down. Um, us here on the show has been kind of a blessing because we were introduced to this site, StreamYard, which helps us keep the show going and helps us also meet and interact with great people like yourself. So that is a plus. Um, have you been able to stay creative though through the whole thing? Have you kept your mind moving and getting yeah. stuff down? You know, it's, it's, um, it's great. Yeah, it's been, it's been, like I said, you know, a time for me to, I had this feeling like, okay, I'm going to complete all these projects, you know? And then after the first down was lockdown was over in LA, I thought I didn't get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it has been good in that way. Cause you kind of, I felt at least that like, okay, the world has stopped. I can take a breath. I'm going to get everything done that I need to, you know, and then when it's over, I can come out, you know, kind of feeling ahead of the game. Uh, that still hasn't happened. But to answer your question more directly, um, yes, I feel like it's been the, a more creative time for me. Um, I'm in, um, I have a love of animation and I'm in an animation uh, workout voice group that uh, meets once a week. So I meet with other um, professionals in that arena and then, you know, we just work on material. So that's been fun. And I started doing that because I got, I just got uh, booked through Netflix. I started doing, um, not animation wise, but VO wise. So I, they brought me in to um, dub series, uh, you know, characters in series, um, you know, and so I was working for Netflix a lot doing that. Uh, dubbing and that that all happened before the pandemic and then after the pandemic if you didn't have a voiceover booth in your house you couldn't do that um and so i never built one i'm uh, still uh -huh. thinking about doing that but um so that was a whole new world in it and it just opened me up to let me look at what i can do here um on the voiceover side and i and I thought, God, I've always wanted to do animation. And then the next week I got an animation audition. <laughs> so I thought, well, this is like a little sign, you know, that I should be uh, doing this possibly. Anyway, I just kind of I just kind of go with my gut, you know, with most things. So that's been fun. Um, other things that I've been um, doing was I did get, uh, I did do um, a film. Uh, I think it was like the end of last year now. I'm called Middleton Christmas. Yes. Um, it just so happens that, you know, the casting director on it both that was you know luckily a fan of mine for years and separately Eileen's and he brought us both in and we both ended up well she was probably offered the part of course um, <laughs> you know, I luckily got the part um, but I got so excited when I found out that she was in it as well I played a doctor so that was a lot of fun um, and then um, during COVID I got cast in this little short called The End and it was a music yeah. video but they're doing like a longer form um, short film and um, it was a really beautiful story. You, you see an entire life of this couple um, and you know it takes you through the beginning love to him losing her in the end. That's um, um, that's the one I, I have not seen that yet but I did notice and I guess you just explained the characters names are him and her. Yes. Is that kind of like where they leave it? Yes, they do. Um, you know, I don't know what will happen in the longer form version um, if the director gets around to doing that. But um, yeah, they do leave it there because it's I I never I didn't speak with the director about it. But if it were me, I would think it's just representative of everyone. And makes sense. You know, to say like young Jenny, old Jenny, you know, I'm so glad we don't didn't do that. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they left it as late. Maybe they did. <laughs> Maybe I blanked it out. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I have to say, it was a little shocking. I got to the set 
And they started putting all this aging makeup on me. Not that you can really see it. The lighting was extremely dark. Um, and so, but literally like I said, I have pictures. I should, I don't know. <laughs> gray in my hair, you know, really a lot of gray. That will age you like that. And, uh, you know, the, this thing and the yeah. Siri. And then as I was supposed to be sick, like the dark circles that I thought, no, just don't no, check the mirror. <laughs> That's enough. Like, okay, wait, you can go and check. It's not about that. And then, you know, you look at it and you can't really see it. Although I kind of looked puffy or something toward the end. I thought, well, that works for it. <laughs> anyway, then I just got. Should we? Just, I feel so odd just keeping on talking about myself, but I guess that's no, why it's, I'm it's here to hear. <laughs> so there's another um, project that uh, that I was offered called um, Better Than Perfect, mm -hmm. and it's a sweet film um, about. You know, so it's a, so it's a biography. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you. Believe me, that would not be the title of my autobiography. <laughs> um, Anyway, so yeah, so uh, better than perfect, and um, you know, it was it was delayed because of I saw that, yes. COVID, and hopefully that will uh, get a new start date. So I play the lead character's mom um, in that, so I'm excited about that. And then uh, that same casting director for Middleton Christmas uh, just put together just a little web series, and uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of like over the top, campy. Um, so, you know, that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. So somehow I've managed to uh, keep doing small things here and there and, and um, you know, just grateful for every opportunity and to keep learning, right? Uh, yeah, it's terrific because the world definitely does need more Nancy Valen. Just Oh my gosh, yeah, thank you. You're my brother, probably the only people that feel that <laughs> Well, Jewel does now, like I said, my brother does. He was like, oh my God, that's the girl. <laughs> we were talking today and, um, you know, him and his, his wife tune in and, He's, um, I was talking about tonight, and I told him I'm nervous and uh, a little yeah, white. You were, you were nervous. I was like, what is he talking about? I mean, it's it's Nancy Bellin, for God's oh. sake. What, so, what was your favorite movie, Jeff, that I did? Like, what? why did you like me? Like, what? how did that happen? I said Loverboy was just terrific. Um, is that the first thing that I was in that you happened to see? It might have been. Well, no, I've seen you in, in a lot of TV stuff. Of course, um, Saved by the Bell with Nurse Jennifer was also like, terrific like the character was great and i just always just the way you deliver yourself so like when they put you in baywatch i was like yeah it's like i never watched baywatch <laughs> until you came on oh i guess now i'm watching baywatch because i just oh, i just you. love everything you do oh, that makes me feel so good thank you absolutely it's my pleasure you've been on a lot you've been on a lot of tv shows like friends uh walker texas ranger you had bit parts and so many things and, and movies i guess the question i wanted to ask what do you prefer? Do you like movies better? Do you like TV better? Do you like being behind oh, the yeah. camera? I'll take whatever comes my way, right? Um, <laughs> paycheck, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's not, you know what? I mean, at this point, it's not really the paycheck. It's just just to keep working, right? To improve, sure. just to improve at what I do. Um, you know, just whatever's fulfilling, right? Isn't that what it's about? Yeah. Um, it's fun. Um, it's not fun. I don't really want to show up. Um, unless I can just really learn a lot. But um still fun, right? It's a type of fun. But anyway, uh, what do I prefer? In a perfect world, I would prefer film, right? You know, I just, you know, a, a not and not, it's wonderful that they're doing low budget, but you know, any larger budget films that I've done, not that many, but it was wonderful just to have that, you know, rehearsal and you don't get that on, you know, much of anything else. It, very rare. It's a very rare thing to have. Um, so yeah, that's, that was the, 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 uh, the perfect world scenario. Like on Friends, you you played a part on Friends, and then Baywatch became such a big part of Friends and Friends culture, and now Friends has blown up, and like this new generation has loved Friends now that it's you know syndicated on Netflix and all that. Right. Um, how how did you feel? Like, did, were you a fan of the show after that? Because it was, so, I mean, it was such a huge friends? show. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, no, I loved Friends. Um, I didn't really connect it to me doing it, I just loved it. And um, I think I was on the first season and it was an immediate hit. I actually went up for Jennifer Aniston's part. I think I was God awful. Oh, oh that would have been great. No offense oh, no. Jennifer Aniston, but that would have been great. Absolutely, obviously, <laughs> it was perfect. <laughs> um, you know, when you have a hit like that of that magnitude, they, they did an incredible job casting that show. Um, but uh, I, I loved Friends. It's, it's a phenomenal show. That was an incredible week. Uh, 
James Burroughs, everyone calls him Jimmy Burroughs. I still have a hard time doing that. Uh, he was absolutely amazing. You know, he would fly in, talk to the actress, go do this, do that, da, 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 and then he'd be gone. I'm like, what, what did he say? He probably <laughs> talked really fast. Um, but he would just drop in and give those actors gold and leave. You know, he did it with me, he did it with everyone around me. And I'll give you a little inside information that I thought was really interesting. Is um, <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew Perry, like I had heard people go, can I get a line reading on that, Jimmy? Or, um, you know, how do you think this would work? Or, you know, and most of the cast, they're so talented, but most of them kind of had a group of the way they did it. I kind of heard them do a scene a certain way. Matthew Perry was the exception. First of all, if they, I remember they were rewriting a scene and they asked Matthew Perry to join the writers, which is very cool. Um, he funny. never said, I'm not going to say he never said the line the same twice, but it just always just came out in different ways. And he was never not funny. He's so talented. Um, he's just so, so, so very gifted. Um, you know, and he's got this, the comic um, gift for sure. sure. So that was really interesting uh, to watch. And it was just a, a fun you know, job. I had no idea that that other character. Oh, would you guys know her name? She's so good. Uh, oh, the girl that Janice. Oh, oh, I, I, I Janice. I'm terrible that I don't know her name, but she was so funny with that. Oh my god, <laughs> so funny. But it's so rare that we talk to, that we speak to someone who who's been on a, a huge show like Friends. Like, it's just you wonder <laughs> how it operates and all of those all of the six are comedic geniuses like i love them all so much so yeah. to be a part of that yeah. um must have been a crazy experience it was fun it was a lot of fun and you know it's different on sitcoms you go in you rehearse every single day for four days and then it's more like doing you know theater um and then on the fifth day you tape in front of a live audience um and you get that feedback of the laughing and all of that so um you know, it's a, it's a totally different different experience, and I love that. And in terms of it becoming part, you know, the Baywatch culture, um, I get so excited whenever I hear Yasmin's a name. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told her the other day, I said, do you realize I'm CNN 90s decade? Have you watched it? She goes, well, I, heard, I said, they talk about you. She goes, yeah, I heard that. And I said, Yasmin, they end with you. Run, Yasmin, run. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm running. You know, you don't realize it at the time when you're friends with someone, but you know, she really made quite the impact, Mike. It's awesome. And and Baywatch, and I, I, I listened to the past interview. I didn't know you were like close personal friends with Zach Efron, like he's a family friend. What did you think of the movie? And the whole phenomenon. Oh, I mean, it, they have such friend. a cool following. Where did you read that I was a family friend? Oh, I, I heard on the on the last interview, you said you knew Zach Efron. That- oh, okay. So he's not a family friend at all. Oh, I'm sorry. And I don't know if I've met him once. Um, oh. Yeah. And I'm I wrong. I'm that, sorry. Did I tell that story when he borrowed our car? Maybe no. not. Okay. <laughs> Maybe this is how. <laughs> I, okay. So he is, we have a close family friend that's a publicist. And that publicist represents Zach. So oh, okay. I've met him more than that once, and I'm just not remembering. I I back a little bit, and I definitely did see him. I think that day at the Baywatch thing. But anyway, one day we get a call um, from our friend Jeff, Jeff Ballard. He's a publicist, and he said Zach's in trouble right now. He, the paparazzi's chasing him, and he cannot get rid of them. So I have a plan. Can he use your car? And I, <laughs> uh, like, when when would we just? This is where celebrity comes in, right? How we can just. Right he duped right um and he didn't dupe us at all he was amazing but you know it's like oh it's a celebrity okay here's my life you know <laughs> like what am i doing but anyway I, he knew him right so i said sure he can okay zach efron can borrow my car he goes okay this is what we're gonna do we're gonna have zach pull in to your mother-in-law's and then once the gates close the paparazzi's been climbing up on the gates and they're gonna take pictures inside, but I'm gonna be inside the house. And then I shouldn't say this, now the paparazzi's gonna know what to do, but I don't think Zach's ever coming over again. But then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they would close the, uh, he's gonna close the garage doors and they can't get pictures, right? So then Zach's gonna walk through my mother-in-law's house. He's gonna walk through the backyard, past the, what, you know, all the stuff back there. And then our house is next door. So then he walked through my house and then into our garage 
and took our car. <laughs> and then he went out for like five hours in my car, carless. And then I got the call, Zach's coming back. And I was like, okay, uh, I don't want to make him uncomfortable. I'll leave my house. So I left to let him walk <laughs> in the house. In the and he left my keys for me. So, you know, that's my Zach Efron story. <laughs> did, he, did he put gas in the car at least? I don't think so. <laughs> Look, you know, I think when you're, I, I know so I mean, he wasn't a child star, but he kind of was. I have some friends that were child stars and literally they can't do anything. I mean, it's not because they're, you know, they don't, they really have had people do everything for their entire yeah. life. And, uh, you know, I wonder if it's like, I, I have no idea. I don't know how to chat. I, I don't. We got that. We got that question again about him filling the tank. Apparently, everybody wants yeah. to know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he did. No, he didn't fill the tank. Um, yeah, um, he did not. Did not fill the tank. Oh, jeez. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, that, that's a great story. It really is hilarious. Um, so, how did you? Um, how did you spend your holidays? What was good for the holiday season? Doing things special. I know you're you're always in the family oriented things for the holiday. Obviously, cut back a little bit because of COVID. What was your holiday season like? Okay, so normally, like I think it's because of not really celebrating much growing up. I really needed to make up for that, you know. And I was the one that watched Eight Is Enough. And if, for you guys don't know, but uh, so it was a very popular show back in the day. And my father in law was the star of it. And I used to watch that show and think. Oh, that's what my life is supposed. To. Oh, that's what a family's like, you know. Um, and yeah, right. They, that like they were family. They were family, family yeah. right? But yeah. I lived in the apartment. It was beautiful. It was on the beach. I have nothing to complain about. Um, hence why the only sport I can do is swimming. Um, you know, but you know the the idealistic, right? The house and then the dad. You know, I came from my mom was single mom. Um, anyway, so you know, I used to watch that, and I just had this. A vision, you know, that I wanted to, uh, you know, celebrate the holidays big. And as a result of that, I think at one point we had 50 people here for Thanksgiving. Um, wow. And it was, you know, it's just always been beautiful and meaningful. And um, I just really would take pride in that um, and just loved it. You know, I'll never have, you know, I always have those memories. I'll never forget those amazing memories. But, and I used to look at my mother in law, like, and think, oh, God, why is she turning into Scrooge? And, you know, why is she like, oh, no presents? And, oh, God, I have to do this again. I thought, oh, that's so sad. I'm never going to be that way. And then <laughs> this year, I thought, oh, goody, I can cancel Christmas. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I mean, it's just the positive, you know, voice in my head. But I was just like, you know, we all decided. We had the family meeting about it. It was like, okay, Thanksgiving is canceled. And now Christmas is canceled. <laughs> and uh, I did kind of do a little bit of, like, sadness about Thanksgiving. So I ended up making a thing. Like, I didn't even cook for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just thought, you know, I didn't even cook for me, my husband and me. So I just, uh, but a couple days later, I thought, okay, I, I'm kind of missing the tradition. And I did make a dinner. Um, and, you know, we did that. But that's it. So how, how were the holidays for you guys? Um, close to the same. Uh, we, sure. you know, New Year's Eve, we went out. Uh, two couples for dinner because and kept it small because in PA, it's really restricted. Right. So we did a little dinner, came home and had some cocktails at the house. Uh, Christmas was very light. Out, huh? You guys, the restaurants were open inside and all that? Outside. Out, outside. 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 So that's yeah. what you're <laughs> So in the middle, of a, the middle of a Pennsylvania late December, early January, we sat outside. It was yeah. pretty cold. The dinner was great, but it was pretty cold. But uh, yeah, they were very, very, you got were very late. Jeff, we're waiting for you in L.A. I am ready for a trip to LA. I know you were originally from Brooklyn. You said occasionally you make your way out to New York and yes. somehow. There. Yeah. Yeah. But, yes, but don't come now. We have a new case of COVID every six seconds here in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah I don't want to come family out there. It's, it's, it's nuts. I'm, I'm pulling for you guys, all you all. And, and my family's really big. So we, we just dialed it down too. And that's all you can do. Really. Yeah. <laughs> but. Yeah, so uh, I mean, one of these times in in New York, I've got friends in New York and Staten Island and all that. And next time yeah. you come to New York, let us know. Maybe we'll do like a Brooklyn oh, meetup. They, they yeah. always take me to um, <laughs> they take me to uh, Spumoni Gardens Pizza in Brooklyn. Oh, I, I you know what? I was literally just born it's in the, the hospital best. there, but I didn't ever live there. I lived in Queens, I guess. Okay. First two years of my life. Then we moved to the city. I was on the Upper West Side. 
Um, and then uh, no dinner. Is that good to sit out in Pennsylvania? In the <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm not going to lie. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah. And then I, I moved to, uh, South Florida when I was seven. And then we used to go back my grandfather actually owned a hotel, um, on the Upper West Side in the city. And we used to, used to go there and spend my summers when everyone else was leaving the city. Uh, we were there in that, um, you know, hot, those hot summers, but, um, I loved it. Had some great experiences. Uh, and that's when I started working. Actually, I started working, um, doing just some print work um there and then i was taking singing lessons um with the singing teacher at the time his name um is howard ross and uh he was he was actually pretty influential in terms of me acting because i remember um i went on a commercial audition through my print agent and uh they handed me the sides and i turned green I was so scared and I handed them to my mother and she goes, what are you doing? You have to learn this. And I said, no, I don't. She goes, yes. <laughs> I said, you do it then. And I walked out. And so when I went to my next uh, lesson, singing lesson, he said, oh, she's got to go to this place, HP Studios. It's a great acting school. And that's where I fell in love with acting. Um, it, you know, it was, it was that summer at, at his suggestion. And, uh, it, it was just, um, it was, a, you know, a great time. So then, yeah, and then then I was in Florida and then I went back to New York um, when I was, I think, 18 or 19. And then I think like literally I was still 19 when I screen tested for Ryan's Hope. And by my first day of the show, I think I just turned 20. So, wow. It's been, yeah. a, it's been a terrific career. So many great credits and you can oh, learn you more and, and check more out on Nancy Valen. Of course, www.nancyvalen.com. IMDB, the place to find all the great movie information. Nancy Valen on Instagram, Nancy Valen Official, and Facebook, of course. Nancy Valen with her brand new public figure page at her there. Of course, find out about the nutrition stuff as well. Before I let you go, Nancy, which I hate to do, it kind of breaks my heart, but obviously we'd like to have you back soon. Uh, you brought this up on Facebook the other day. Our next segment with uh, our next guest is going to be the NFL playoffs and the Super Bowl. You asked who's going to the Super Bowl. I said <laughs> Buffalo. Nancy Valen, who's going to the Super Bowl? Okay, full confession right now. The reason I asked that question is because I'm trying to learn more about sports. Okay. <laughs> I'm very really about all this, okay? I mean, my husband is oh. a real sports guy. But, um, yeah. Nels, is that you? He goes, no, it's not me. Who do you like for the Super Bowl? I'm on a show right now, a radio show. He said, you never bet against Tom Brady. Uh, you know, that's, you that's, know. Good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Tampa Bay. Or Seattle, he says. I, I like uh, Wilson, Roger Wilson. Roger Wilson. I like Seattle and Tom Brady. There you go. My sports IQ <laughs> just went up like phew, so much. There you go. You're learning. But I really You're appreciate learning. everyone's answers. And I'm, you know, now I really know what. Like the teams that are even in the running. So thank you. Kansas, City. Kansas City's a favorite, he says. There you go. Yeah, that's very true. Um, so see, it's filling in that quick. It doesn't take much to learn. Yeah. And and by the time we have you on the next time, you'll be telling us who's in the World Series, who's winning the NBA right. championship, hockey, exactly. you're having on. I do not want that test. <laughs> uh, Nancy, I want to thank you so very much for taking time to come yeah. back with this. You, you again, I mean, I I gush but i feel good about it because you're an angel and i love you you're one of our absolute oh, favorites so and, uh, i can't wait to meet you oh absolutely and that, that is going to happen definitely yeah. I, i'm going to i'm going to shake your hand and i'm going to faint in the process oh i love that thank you so, uh, I'm in love and jewel it was so so wonderful to meet you thank oh, you same here thank you so much to take the time we really appreciate it Absolutely. Don't forget to check out Nancy and uh, let's get you on some more titles. Get Nancy out there acting. We'll have you on the show again very soon. Have a great evening. Nancy Valen, ladies and gentlemen. You too. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, Joel. I could sit and talk to Nancy Valen probably the rest of my life. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be joined by three, count them, one, two, three panelists and myself, and we're going to be breaking down the NFL playoffs. As you know, the NFL this year, Jewel, six wild card games. Seven teams in each conference have made the playoffs. Green Bay and Kansas City, of course, get the bye week. And we're going to talk about it in a few minutes with uh, Evan the Greek. I see him backstage live from Florida. Ashley Mullen is here. She's got her Patrick Mahomes jersey on. 
definitely, uh, I think I know who she's picking through this whole thing. <laughs> and that will be joined shortly by uh, our man, Chris Rupert. I believe he did say he's having a little technical difficulty, but we will give that a minute or two. Then we'll get in. We'll talk some football. A big, big thanks to Nancy Bowen for tuning in. Jewel, the woman doesn't age a second. It's beautiful. Oh, she was so gracious. Thank you so much again, Nancy. We we loved having you. This was it's a great night. <laughs> sure, it was a great night, and it's only going to get better because I, you know, when I tell a lot of people, oh, we got the Yo Show. Me and Jewel do it, and they says, oh, does Jewel know about sports? I'm always like, huh? I'm like, well, you're always talking sports. I assume it's the sports show. It's everything. It's a variety talk show. Yes. Um, <laughs> and the Evan Horn fan club is already here. Uh, your good friend Roll Juarez said uh, he couldn't pick. <laughs> he couldn't. Oh, he couldn't win a pick if the game was over. <laughs> <laughs> that is terrific. Let's start bringing in our uh, our panelists while we wait for our uh, final panelists to come in. While oh, we're waiting for Christian, let's bring on. Uh, are oh, you right? Ready? I couldn't give it time. Let's bring on Evan. Let's bring on Thank Ashley. Gang, <laughs> welcome to the Yo Show. Thanks for your appearances. Now I know Evan's asked to come on a ton of times. He always tunes in. He watches us, and he gives us his little comedy outtakes. Some things I can't even put on because it's over the edge. <laughs> True. True. Uh-huh. True. So, how are you guys doing tonight? Uh, welcome to the show. We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk NFL. I know Evan. Um, you've been a long time uh, advocate of sports, big sports watcher. Uh, you're in the, the sports clothing business, and uh, you and I have been talking about it and gambling about it and shooting the breeze about it for a long, long time. So, uh, how do how do you feel tonight? Feeling confident? I feel good. It's a dream come true. I'm on your show. <laughs> <laughs> your, fan club, your fan club is all over you. Evan the Mushhorn. <laughs> that was a troublemaker. Definitely Always a troublemaker. troublemaker. And um, Ashley, welcome to the show as well. Um, I see you got your Mahomes jersey. You're ready for uh, you ready for some front running this year. I am. I'm a huge Mahomes fan. He's a unicorn. So I've always been a fan of him, even from Texas Tech. So I love him. Yeah, he's a terrific ball player, terrific team that they put together there. I uh, I'm not that person that kisses Andy Reid's ass though. So to me, uh, yes, that's a, a lot of ass. Right place, right You're place, not an right Andy Reid fan. No, once once Why? you leave, once you leave my town, I could give a rat's ass where you end up. <laughs> With me. But you gotta realize, I mean, he ran a West Coast offense; it just didn't work, and I feel like he's done so much for the franchise and I feel like he fits in better in KC. Um, but I still think he's an excellent coach. And the fact that, you know, Jason Kelsey's brother obviously Travis Kelsey plays for them. He's hot. Cool, so <laughs> yeah, he is. He's not definitely hard to look at. But um, uh, actually I could coach the Chiefs with my home's quarterback and <laughs> Yeah, him. you're true. I, I could coach that team with with the that roster, I could probably coach that team and win. Yep. I'm just shocked that I haven't seen him call any time out that he didn't have any left because he was, like, famous for that with the Eagles. So I was always looking out for that. He hasn't done it yet, so we'll see. <laughs> He's always good for uh, poor clock management as well. So I can't believe the guy yes. actually won the Super Bowl. Time out after the first play. Jack, right. why you be with the background? Yo, that's a nice background. When he got back there? Who, me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> I didn't know I you were talking to. Um, so uh, me and my boyfriend were huge, huge sports fans. Um, we actually just bought a house. And it, instead of making the extra bedroom up there for the kids, we stuck them in the laundry room. And we finally got our <laughs> sports cave. Um, he has a lot of um, trading NFL merchandise. He does like the brackets and stuff like that. So we have quite a bit of a collection. Wow. That's just yeah. some of it. But, yeah, bring them jersey. But, yeah, I got them. I had to find them a Rod Brendamore jersey. That's a favorite Flyers player of all time. It's so hard to get it in Flyers. Yeah. Um, that's why he hates Lindros. So we kind of I'm more of a Lindros fan, but nope. how um, many Brendamore jerseys do you want? Well he's what he's in the jersey guy. business. That is Evan's job. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> his well, business, I can find really. Carolina stuff. But I found um it was actually signed and I got it for him for Christmas last year and then he got it framed by one of the framing companies he works with. So it was pretty cool. And he got me my doll uh, my Brian Dawkins jersey. He's my favorite player of all time. So we swapped jerseys. Nice. So 
I got to I got to say this, and, and I got to bring this out. Is it true that okay. you picked Miami this past weekend against the Bills? <laughs> Who me? Don't listen to him. Yeah. <laughs> Rolando's a troublemaker. He's never changed. Oh, uh, I know you're better than that. I know you're better than that. Um, so <clears> it looks <throat> like we're about to win. So it looks like Christian's having technical difficulties. So it looks like it's going to be the three of us uh, picking the playoffs, which is which is fine by me. Uh, I did these neat little graphics and all, so I uh, am ready to start it out. So Jewel is going to moderate. She's going to call out the game. We're going to go in kind of a clockwise rotation. We'll start with me, and then we'll go to Ashley. We'll go to Evan at the end. So Jewel, fire out the first game. I'll put up my little cheesy graphic, and we'll get going. The NFL playoff preview here on the ocean. All right. You ready? Bum, bum, mm-hmm. bum, bum. That's music. <laughs> Colts at Bills. Bills six and a half point favorites. Let's start with Ashley. Okay, so I'm obviously going to have to pick the Bills, but um, is what? I think this is going to be a tighter match than people think it is. Um, Bills defense has stepped up a little bit, but I mean, Josh Allen beast, so. I don't know. I got to go with the Bills. Um, I don't know if they'll cover six and a half, though. But that's my pick. All right. What do you think, Evan? Oh, that's a simple one. If you're going with the point spread, you always got to go. Anytime line six and a half, you got to take the the dog. That's why it's six and a half and not seven. You usually people buy it in the seven, but in a situation like that, I think that's an easy uh, pick. If you're going to take that game, you take the you you take the plus a six and a half, freeze it to seven. By the half a point, and I believe that the Buffalo Bills will actually win the game, but not by seven. Wow! Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take over here, and I think uh, I got Buffalo was one of my favorites to to make it to the Super Bowl. I think offensively, they're one of the only teams that can compete with Kansas City. Uh, like Ashley said, I think their defense is starting to step up a little bit. I've liked uh, what I see out of their defense a little more lately. Uh, and the Colts are a tough team. Colts have a decent defense. Uh, they've got a good running game. I agree with Evan as far as the points. I kind of like the Colts to cover the point spread. I like the Bills to win the game. I like the Bills, honestly, like I said, to challenge all the way out. Uh, but they're, and they've blown out some bad teams the last few weeks. This, to them, is not really a bad team. This is a good team, but I still like the Bills to take the win. All right. Here we go. Rams and Seahawks. Seahawks are four-point favorites. Start with... Jeff, you start. All right. Look at that graphic. Is that pro or what? Actually, it is. It's my mini helmets and a, and a meme site. <laughs> I, I just flicked one of them. It's the uh, – oh, you got to flick. Flicking is uh, is the big one. Uh, Rolando Juarez, write that down, Evan Horn. Uh, Bills win by double digits. Make sure we got his picks on as well. Uh, Seattle and the Rams, uh, division rivals. Rams kind of tuned them up earlier in the year. Uh, Seattle beat them in Seattle. Home game for Seattle seems to change it. I like the Seahawks here. I don't like them that big. It's a four-point spread. Um, I like the Seahawks by a, a field goal in a game that stays close all the way. But I take the I take the Seahawks for the win. Uh, Rams will cover. All right, go down the line. Evan? All right, this is simple. Here's why it's simple. <laughs> all right. The Rams don't know who's quarterbacking yet, correct? They have no if golf's going to play or the other guy's going to play. Why is the yeah. line three and a half four? Why? You know, want to know why? Because they're going to win the game outright. That's why. Wow. They're the That's exactly why. Everyone says, "Oh, Seahawks minus three and a half. I'll lower it to three. I'll lay the three. That's a guarantee winner. It's a one hundred percent loser." Rolando, bet all your money on the Rams money line. Wow, <laughs> Rams with wow. the money line. Man, I'm mm-hmm. writing this down. There's a reason every, every there's three games on Saturday and there's three games on Sunday. One underdog wins each game each week. Yeah, I mean each day. And that's mm. the guaranteed winner, Rolando. Wow. Guaranteed. Mm. Do you agree with this? Actually? Uh I don't think the Rams are gonna win. I wouldn't take the money line on this. Um, because Sean McVay actually said that he's legit not announcing the quarterback until one minute before kickoff. Um wow. he's also coming off of a thumb injury. Um, and just had surgery for right thumb, which is his moderate hand. So I feel like even if he does come in, I don't know if his accuracy, you don't know. And I just don't think that their backup, I mean, if their backup quarterback's good on the, on the, on the ground, but I think Seattle's defense will squash that real quick. So I actually want to take Seattle and I think that they will cover. 
Wow. Whew. So that's a good one. That's like totally both sides of the fence. Uh, I got to tell Rams you. Have, here's the thing. This one was a hard one for me because both teams have been so inconsistent. Like you see the yes. Rams blow up and then they shit the bed. And same thing with Seattle. Like Russell Wilson has had his most inconsistent, in my opinion, inconsistent stat wise year of his career. Okay. So I mean, but you got, you got Metcalf. It's, this is going to be a tight one. This is definitely my close. Could go either way, but I think Seattle's going to come out with it only because of the leadership quarterback situation. I like it. I have no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say who the cuter quarterback is, Joel. I was just going to say, yeah. who do you yeah. think? Who do you think? I don't know, man. I always played sports. I never watched it. Uh, Bucks at Redskins. We're going to start uh, with uh, mm. yeah. Bucks are at eight point favorites. Start with Evan. Yeah, she did say Redskins. Thank you. For me? Yeah. Ashley's pretty good. I mean, she knows what she's talking about, making me scared. Uh, I know, right? No doubt, no doubt. I mean, between the shirt, the, the helmets, the jerseys, I'm a little nervous with this. But uh, I've given you two ga- I've given you two games, uh, both dogs. Um, you know, there's no way three dogs are favored on a Saturday or a Sunday. Uh, I think the, I think the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers absolutely demolished the Washington Redskins. Reason being, mm. Washington Redskins, honest to God, truth, have no business even being in there with seven. What are they? Seven and nine. Seven and nine. Well, look okay. at the look at the division. <laughs> yeah, look at the exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, so. what, isn't your uh, husband an Eagles fan? I see some Eagles stuff back there. Oh, we're diehard Eagles fans. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, it is so, pretty. And, we, and we we despise Tom Brady. We respect them for the player he is. Can't yeah, I so. just thought like Tom Brady. Um, yeah, I, I I believe that this game is a game where people are like, you know what, eight's a lot of points. Uh, guess what? It's going to be it's going to be ugly. And it's going to be ugly early, just like uh, uh, two weeks ago when they played on Saturday. They played. They were up like what twenty? They were played. Who did they play two weeks ago? That they were killing them at halftime. I forgot. Oh, um, the Jets. The it was Atlanta, I believe, right? No. It, it was on a Saturday. They were up 27 nothing in the first quarter. Tom Brady had four touchdown passes by halftime. It's going to be like one of them kind of games. Reason being is Washington's just not good. They're just not good. Their run game is eh. Most of their plays are um, the running backs come out of the backfield, screen passes. And even if Washington scores two, three touchdowns by accident, Tampa Bay's going to score seven or eight on purpose. So Washington easy. punk bitches. Easy. So here's what you do. You take Tampa Bay. You, you you tease Tampa Bay and you take the Rams and that's 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 a winner for you guys. I like it. I am um, I'm going to step up and, and definitely say Tampa Bay. I agree with the fact that Washington barely belongs here, but like Ashley said, look at the division. Nobody did, and it pissed me off that the Giants were like, "Ah, oh, the Eagles couldn't win for us." Look, six and ten does not get you in the playoffs. Win your own damn games. Win at least half your fucking games. Win eight. And then talk about getting in the playoffs. Oh, win You're six. telling me that the Giants wouldn't go for a draft pick? Like, relax. That's the that exactly. I've ever heard. Like, the Jets are stupid for winning the last yes. two games. To yeah. drop down. Like, that was the most ass thing. I'm like, what did you win for? At what cost? Your head coach is gone. Like, why would yeah. you do that? It's so dumb. I was more so than dumb. happy with Doug Peterson pulling Hurts, mm-hmm. taking that loss, not helping the Giants. Cowboys were already out. And by default, Washington... Redskins get in. I don't call them the football team. That's nonsense. Yeah, um, yeah, that's weird. But Alex Smith may play like a part-time role. They don't even know if Alex Smith is going to play this weekend. They're talking about mixing the quarterbacks in and out. Uh, I think Tyler Henke is their backup. That's enough for me right there. Uh, Tom Brady, playoffs. You don't bet against him. I don't care if he's playing in Washington. I don't care where he's playing. I like it solidly. Tampa Bay, at least two touchdowns, if not more. It's going to be ugly. Yep. Ashley, what do you have? All right. So, obviously, watching the division rival, but out of everyone in the NFC least, um, I did want Washington to see it. I'm kind of happy that we did take the bye and let them go. One for the Alex Smith story alone. I mean, look at what he's overcome. Uh, sure. Head coach with cancer. You know what I mean? He played under Andy Reid and stuff. So, um, but here's my thing people are sleeping on Washington's defense. They are the best at putting pressure on the passer. Tom Brady and his O-line have had a lot of scuffles. Not on the same page, even though they revamped the entire O-line for Tom Brady 
before this even started, and I said beginning, watch, he's going to be exposed, and he's not going to be able to come out of the pocket, take a shit, wipe his ass, and throw the ball. Now he's getting exposed, and you see him throwing the iPad or whatever, <laughs> getting in scuffles with his O-line. So it's like, I feel like, I don't think it's a win at all. I'm just throwing that out there, because I hate Tom Brady, and I just wanted to say it. Um, <laughs> but obviously, it's a bad um, I think that they'll win probably by 10 because I think people are sleeping on the Washington D. Um, I think Jones covering Fournette's going to be a good matchup. Um, but you got two of the best corners in the league that's for for Redskins. So we'll see. But I still like Tampa uh, as much as I don't want to admit it. But And I'm not calling the Washington football team. It's like calling Franco Mills the Philadelphia Mills. Yes, yes. Hey, Jeff, really right. All I heard was wiping shit and playing with balls. <laughs> I, know, I, I love, I love it. First of all, you added balls into there. So, you know. <laughs> when, when I put the panel together, it's people that, uh, like, I've known Evan a long time. I know he's avid in sports. And I've watched Ashley and her, her fantasy football picks. I know she knows sports. I'm like, all right, it's going to be great to get a panel together. So Evan messaged me and said, you know, do you want me to be funny? I'm like, yeah, it could be funny. Meanwhile, Ashley's over here kicking both of our aces with the yeah, comedy bitch. She's yeah. loving it. <laughs> Can you come back next week and just talk to me? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I need immortal friends in my life, so I'll definitely do that. Because I love talking sports and just chatting it up. So I got you. Hell That's yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm going to throw it right back at you. So that, what, wait, wait. That's oh, I love three, it. Three for the Bucks, right? That's yeah, three uh-huh. for the Bucks, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Covering Ashley, it all. I'm throwing it right back at you with yes, Ravens and Titans. Ravens are three-point favorites. Is this for me? Yes, you start this time. Oh, I really, <laughs> out of all the games, I was hoping you didn't start with this. This one, I cannot decide. Oh. <laughs> this is going to be for me the closest anyone can have it game. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to go with Tennessee only because Stiff Arm Henry is a beast, um, but their te- their defense is terrible. So it all depends on Lamar and his whether he's got the momentum. I mean, they've been fighting for the spot for the last two weeks, so that could go either way. That could go keeping the momentum up and have the fire under their ass, or they could be tired out. You know what I mean? So it all depends on that. And I feel like if they can, you know, stop Henry and force Tannehill to throw more, he still has good options on the offense too. And I know Ravens are favorite, but I'm going to have to go with Tennessee um, on this one. And I think it's going to be – I don't even know if it will be by three, man. I'm, it might go to <laughs> OT or by like two – I don't know. I'll, I'll say Tennessee by three. Huh? Overtime two. Uh, yeah. yeah, listen. You have that one juicy. Have you been? Twenty twenty has been a crazy year for football. Safety. Safety. Look at all the goddamn kicking. No one's made it consistently in any week of football. It's been so kicking weird. Is a, kicking gets worse every year. Kicking oh should be taken God. out of the game. <laughs> yeah, but you have one job, and it, sometimes it comes down to your to your kicker. So I don't know. There you go. Tennessee by three. What do you have, Evan? Well, I'm going to piggyback off Ashley a little bit here. I'm going to say, uh, you know, they played last year in the playoffs. Uh, yes. Ravens were the one seed. Um, they got beat by Tennessee because Tennessee ran the ball. So uh, this year, Baltimore has been extremely inconsistent with their quarterback situation, which we all know that he definitely regressed this year. Um, Tennessee, I lo- I watched them play last week, actually. I, I, I'm more of a running back. More of a more of a running, you know, uh, offensive kind of guy. I love when they use Henry and they play action pass with Tanny Hill, and he rolls out and sneaks, gets five to ten yards almost every time. Uh, um, Henry is a beast. I just really do not see um, Tennessee not winning this game, and I do see him winning in handily like last year. Wow! I mean, they last year uh, Jackson threw for like over four hundred yards, and they still lost because they got behind so many. Remember, he threw a pick. He threw a pick six. He scored early, and then they fumbled, and they scored twenty-one nothing. And it, honestly, I think that that's a little bit in their head still. Um, I, I really do believe the Tennessee Titans are going to be tough this year in this playoffs. I think they're going to beat some teams, yeah. and it's going to start yep. this week. And again, I, you have to pick one dog that's going to win out, right? And this is the one right here. Simple. Yep. Wow, this is like, and and, and you're saying simple, and I got to tell you. 
I think last year sticks in Baltimore's head because it was theirs to win. I actually picked Tennessee last year to get the upset, money line and all, like money on the table. Uh, I see it opposite this year. I think Baltimore has got a score to settle. I think they are red, red hot right now. They're playing very mm-hmm. fluid football. Maybe not, um, maybe not picture perfect football. I mean, Lamar Jackson, we know, is sloppy, but they got a terrific running game. And I love the kid Dobbins, and and I like Gus Edwards. I, I like their all around makeup. I love um, I love Harbaugh as a coach. I think he gets this team straight. I think they go into Tennessee and pull off the upset. I like the Ravens here. I just think I'm not the upset, rather they are the favorite. But I think they're so red hot right now. I got to stick with the Ravens. Wow. I think it's all going to come down to defense because Ravens defense is not the usual Ravens defense. Um, they allowed what Chubb to run. 160 yards on them this year. Last year, they allowed Henry to 190, the most in the league. So I feel like it's literally going to depend on whose defense step up the most against the run game, to be honest. I think that's what it's going to come down to. I kind of agree. It's kind of a um, – to me, it's going to kind of come down to you have to sell out something. Like the Ravens obviously will sell out to shut down Henry and, and let Tannehill beat them, which he can. On the other way, if Tennessee does sell out against – the run game, Jackson still can make things happen with his feet. I know running quarterbacks, a lot of people say they don't win Super Bowls. Possibly, this isn't the Super Bowl yet. This is one week. This is one win. I think Baltimore's got it. I like the fact we're big-time odds against this one, but I go Baltimore. Joel, hit us with what's next. I got us momentum now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling pumped. All right. Bears and Saints. Saints are 10-point favorite. Jeff? Huh. 10-point favorite to me is, is almost insulting to the Saints. Um, no disrespect to the Bears. They started hot. They did this that Nick Foles thing, which was garbage. Brought back uh, Trubisky, who's trying to save his Ugh. career. But as a whole, I just I just don't see this Bears team being a, a step up, bring home a big game kind of kind of team. They established a decent running game. David Montgomery's come on, but the Saints play a good run defense, especially at home. Um, can't really vote against Drew Brees. In New Orleans, it's really tough. I think 10 points might be too little. I think the Saints rack them up. I think they make a point. Uh, A lot of people think the Saints can take out the Packers and win the whole NFC. I don't put a pass in. Saints are a terrific team, well coached. I like the Saints big time here. Very big. Evan. Um, You know what? 10 is a big number in the NFL. Not a lot of games fall more than 10, uh, except for, of course, the Buccaneers on Saturday. I do believe – hold on, what's I say? Oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> Back in Evans' low world days, he would rush for 187 yards and two TDs against the Ravens. Wow. Like these Ravens today are back then. <laughs> I apologize for him. He's a little strange. I mean, <laughs> little kids. He should be on the show too. Because what the stuff he would say, we would laugh at him. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Jewel, you look as happy to be on the show as not only kid. <laughs> oh, sorry. Not my forte. You're doing a great job for not even being involved with this work. Uh, When you you do your picks, just pick mine. So anyway, (laughs) going. Oh, now that see that's what's worth children. I got about four of them running around here, but they're about 18 years old or older. Um, It's quite a difference. (laughs) Oh boy. Oh, she's so cute. Yeah, they're easy when they're that age. When this is over here, this guy over here, he's 18 years old. He's a pain in my ass. Anyway. Jules, Jules' daughter just wants to be on the show and, and waving on. That's, that's my son. He's running over here. He's trying to sit on my lap, my, my son. I'm only kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> going back to my so, real quick. So the I, I, the Bears quarterback situation. What's that? Oh, she's got to give everybody the, the like and subscribe. How's this? You can have her pick these games and she'll do better than me. <laughs> yeah, you got to have, you gotta have her wear your merch and sell it. Yeah. So buy my merch. Oh, she does. Say say Bears or Saints? What do you pick? Bears or Saints? What you pick? No, what, what no. Do you pick? Do you Bears pick? The Bears. Say the Bears are blue and the Saints are gold. <laughs> Bears or Saints? Pick one. Bears. She knew. She, 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 she picked a panda bear. Okay. Sorry. Ran it down. Ran it down. So anyway, I really believe that this is one of them games where you're you know you you lay the ten with the Saints. Saints are up 17 late in the fourth quarter. You know, the Bears get a field goal to make it, you know, 14, and then they sneak in and score a backdoor touchdown. Not a lot of games are, are, you know, do finish 
more than 10 points. Uh, you, you go down, look at all the games all year long. It just doesn't happen. I do do believe the Saints will be up big and will not cover in the end, and probably because they'll be playing their prevent, prevent defense. And you know what? Their defense is okay. They were ranked number one until the Eagles shredded them apart. But other than that, I, I just don't – I really don't – I'm not scared of the Saints. And I'll tell you what, uh, the Packers aren't either. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Actually. All right. So um, I'm going to go with the Saints. First of all, they are lucky as hell that they put them in the Sunday slot because if they played Saturday, Kamara would have been out. So yeah. they got lucky. Perfect. They got super lucky. Uh, Thomas is coming back off of IR. So there's two huge playmakers right there. Um, you also got Drew Brees at home. Um, but I feel like. The Bears' defense is not the old Bears' defense. Khalil Mack is not the same. Um, I don't think that they'll make any good kicks to, like, you know, catch up. They'll probably double doink a few more. Um, I think the Saints are going to completely demolish them, um, I think, at least by 10. I'll have to agree with Jeff on this one. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to have to go with Saints and at least by 10. Saints by 10. All right. That was all three, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Cleveland. Oh, yeah, it was all three as far as the panel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The yeah, we have yeah. games on Sunday. That's what I'm One yep. more. Game. One more. Browns at Steelers. Steelers are a six-point favorite. Oof. Start with Evan. Thank line, you. I don't line, want to go first. Line opened up three and a half Steelers. is now six. That definitely tells you something right there. It's actually yeah. kind of scary that a game moves that much. I know that the Browns are um with the coronavirus. <clears throat> Shit and all that stuff, and then, you know what? I'll be honest with you. They're, they haven't made the playoffs since what 02? and they're in the same boat as the Buffalo Bills. In my eyes, they're there. They're happy to be there, but they're not hungry enough to go past this point. It's going to take mm -hmm. a year. Teams like this, in the 2007 Philadelphia Philly, they lost in the what, second round of the playoffs. Kind of like the same feeling like that before they they before the Browns want to be involved with the big boys, such as the Eagles. I mean the uh, Chiefs. Uh, it's things like uh, I was kidding, by the way, about the Eagles. Uh, it, this week is their first playoffs in a long time, along with the Bills. That's why I can't see the Bills going far. I just don't see it, Jeff. I don't see it at all. Same, same situation with the Browns. I, I really believe the Steelers are going to win this game 37 to 10, 37 wow. to 13. I think it's going to be humiliation. They won last week in Pittsburgh to get in the playoffs. Pittsburgh didn't play other players. And, and there's a reason why that line moved from three and a half, which is a gambling line, up to six. Yeah. And it, there's a huge reason for that. And the reason is, is because the Steelers are going to wipe them off the field. All right, Jeff. I'm going to go to the same thing, and we I talked about the line a lot, and noticed the move from three and a half to six, uh, which is which is huge. Uh, Baker Mayfield, like I said, first playoff. There's something about a guy in his first playoff that just it's not quite there. You get exceptions to the rule, but um, I don't see him coming through clutch. The COVID problem is big for Cleveland. They don't know who's going to be out. Their coach may not even be there. It's it's a crazy situation. Pittsburgh has a point to prove. They started out 11-0, slowed down a bit. People began to sleep on them. But you know what? Tomlin's a good coach. They got a lot of talent on defense, and they can't turn down a veteran like Big Ben. I kind of like that. I think the Steelers win big here to six points. Uh, it started three, got the six. I think it could even move again over to seven. I think the line keeps moving because everybody, I think, kind of jumps on the Pittsburgh bandwagon here. I like, uh, I like Pittsburgh. All right, Ash? This is if a, I can call you out. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Um, so I'm going to go with Steelers as well. But here's the thing. Steelers had the record that they did because of the teams that they played. They did not play big winning teams. And once they did, they barely won. Um, Brown, I think the spread changed once the COVID thing happened because they're out two coaches and two players. That's why I think the spread moved i think people are sleeping on the browns when they're whole um but my boyfriend is a huge huge browns dynamic fan um <laughs> i'm not i think that he reminds me of another johnny manzel i feel like he's just gonna shit the bed not maybe not as bad um but <laughs> but um i don't think that he has the potential especially in his first round of playoffs um, especially with OBJ out, um, I feel like 
Steelers are going to beat them. I don't know. I feel like people are overrating the Steelers a little bit. I mean, they're the maybe Fitzpatrick's a beat defense wise. Um, I don't know if they'll completely like kill them, but with all the COVID, I mean, they're not even playing in the facility. They're doing everything virtual, so I don't know how much prep they can get since they've been there since 2002. But I'll go Steelers um, by seven. Still covers the spread. I can do virtual workouts, so I can run and I can catch passes virtually. <laughs> You know, kick an ass over here. Um, that was great. That that's all six games in a nutshell. Before Jewel gives us the final tally, if she has it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, without her, your show's no good. I agree. That's why people tune in. They tune in to see that face, not hear this big mouth. Nobody likes this big mouth. Uh, does right now the number one seeds are Green Bay and Kansas City. Is there a legit threat to either one of those teams? If so, who it is? It if, if you had one team to pick to upset the number one seeds, who would you go with? Um, Ashley, who do you think could possibly knock off Kansas City or Green Bay, if anybody? No one's not going to off KC. They're going to win Super Bowl 55 again. Um, <laughs> Mahomes is going to beat Rodgers for MVP. Just saying. No, seriously. <laughs> um, I think for the AFC chip, it's going to be Tennessee and Kansas City. Um, NFC is a little tricky for me. I think... It's going to come down to Green Bay and Tampa, and I think Green Bay is going to pull off the win because they're hungry for it after, you know. Um, but I think the, the NFC chip will probably be the Saints and Green Bay. Um, I don't know. I would love to see an Aaron Rodgers and Saints game. I really would. I really would. So I think, I don't know. Green Bay, I think their biggest threat is going to be the Saints. We should do this next week. More picks. Yeah, why not? Oh, after yeah. after all of Evan's picks flop, and Roll Juarez can come back on and bash him again when his picks fall apart. Uh, Evan, do you think anybody beats the one seeds? Do you see anybody as a threat? I really do see. I do see Mahomes playing Rodgers in the Super Bowl. How great would that be? Over under would be like mm-hmm. sixty. Yeah. <laughs> Kansas City would be a three point favorite. You know, yeah, by four. That would be that would be the top rated Super Bowl in a long time. I mean, how exciting. Mm-hmm. And well-deserved. And well-deserved, both teams. Which means one thing and one thing only. It's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> That's right. One seed don't play one seed. It's like the NCAA tournament. No one ever finishes one and one seeds play. So if they're, I believe one of them are going to be there, and I do believe it's going to be uh, Kansas City. I really – I think it – I don't. I, I see Green Bay getting upset by, by New Orleans or Tampa Bay or right. one of those two are going to be. It's never one versus one. So uh-huh. there you go. I could buy that. Uh, for my money, and again, you talk about what people want to see. Nobody really wants to see the Bills in the Super Bowl because they're not a sexy team. I like the Bills, but that's going like from the standpoint of, of a guy that likes football because I love Josh Allen. And I like the fact that he got good but not premier names as wide receivers made them all stars. Stefan Diggs has been brilliant this year. Cole Beasley has been terrific. They've got a nice supporting cast. they got – Decent running game, and Allen makes a lot of things happen, and the defense is stepping up. Um, really? Sean McDermott. Hey, I mean, I like Sean McDermott, another former Eagle guy uh, as the coach. So I'm going to go with the Bills. Tough set to Chiefs. I think Green Bay makes it draw. I think it's a Bills-Green Bay Super Bowl. I'm starting, of course, next week. That'll change once the Bills lose to the Colts. But for now, it's, it's- – oh, I was going to say, <laughs> are you on drugs or you need some? But there is no way the Bills are beating the Chiefs. They haven't been in the playoffs since 95, okay? They are not know. beating KC. You're crazy. You're crazy. Bills were, there. Bills were there last year. They had that little, like, last-minute hiccup against Houston, if you remember. Jeff, you're a Bills fan, right? Am I a Bills fan? Oh, well, you're a Bills fan this week. This week. Mm-hmm. How many games this year has Cole Beasley had over 100 yards? Um, That's a good question. I don't know the answer. You ready so, for this answer? He is consistent. He's, good. He's a good flex pick for, like, uh, fantasy because he is yeah. consistent. He does get, like, a lot of screen passage yardage, first down. So, I agree with that. He's not a big bomber, wow. but five he's a games, 100 yards. <laughs> five. five games. Five. That's crazy. That is great. And that just goes to show you what, like, they got rid of defensive players. It was like, oh, Buffalo's not going to be any good. They dumped their defense to get Diggs. But Diggs, Beasley, they're the perfect little slot guys. They get open. Mm-hmm. They make big plays. 
Hey, look, I will tell you, Josh Allen improved a lot from last year. Josh Allen was a quarterback last year, a buck sixty, maybe eighty yards rushing. You're like, oh my god, this guy's this guy's like the new like whatever. And then he st- he stopped. He started staying in the pocket a little bit more, rolling out, kind of like the way Hertz played. Um, oh boy, here he goes. Like, you, you just can't. He's such a <laughs> oh, Bills. Man. Bills yeah. versus Seahawks. Meanwhile, that, that picture of Orlando showing up is yeah. 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nothing like that. <laughs> uh, Josh Allen has really surprised me, and I'm a little bit into the to the to the sports cards industry. His cards yeah. were mm-hmm. shot shot way up there. Nothing like Mahoney's. Yeah. We call him Mahoney's, yeah. by the way. Mahoney's. Um, I call him my homie because he's my homie. Her he's homie. my homie. Uh, Josh Allen's <laughs> cards went through the roof. Him and Herbert and uh, it's a sign of the he's going to be good, and he is good. And you know, I just thought. I First shot he was always a good running quarterback. His accuracy over the last year, like he put in work, and you can tell oh, his yeah. accuracy is so much yeah. better. But a complete 180. He's always been a good running quarterback, but he can show out of the pocket a lot better. He's looking down the field better. He's scanning the field better. I totally agree with that, but there ain't no way well, they're beating the Chiefs. Actually, right now he's playing like a good Carson Wentz. It's the truth. Ooh, a, a, healthy Car- a healthy, <laughs> protected Carson Wentz. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 Carson Wentz two years ago, well, two years ago, uh, no, last three, year. Three years ago now. No, uh, yeah, three, it, it reminds me of Josh Allen, it really does. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good analogy. Like, Allen has found the confidence. He's throwing in the tight windows now, not stupid where he just throws a pass in an area and hope it lands. Now he knows where he's going. He, he's got a, a cannon of an arm. I think the guy's an overall just great competitor. I like Josh Allen a lot. Uh, what I'd like to do, Evan, you're talking about cards. Maybe in the next month or two, maybe do a segment with some card stuff because I've gotten into it again. Um, I'm huge. I, huge. Um, I, I just got – um. I don't, I, it's hard to be that big because the finances of buying the big stuff. But I was just with uh, my sister in law, her boyfriend just handed me a nice few cards. Um, uh, Luka Doncic rookie, uh, a nice uh, optic rookie of um, Jason Tatum. So I'm starting to get cooked back up again. And so I'm like, oh, we'll it's do that. Now. It's addicting. It is very addicting. I love it. So yeah, my boyfriend that. doesn't even collect them and he watches all the breaks and stuff for him because he watches. Oh, wow. Yeah, he does that. Um, he's huge into wrestling. I don't know if you guys do like wrestling stuff, but um, I'm huge into wrestling. I have I have a uh, Ric Flair boot signed over there that's just chilling on the shelf. Wow. Like, that's right cool. <laughs> I do have to give props to Jewel and her um, Wonder Woman cup. I love that cup you keep drinking out of. Oh, thank you. I love. Wonder, I have a Wonder Batman Wonder. one like that. There you go. DC all the way. Yeah, she is a yes. legendary Wonder Woman between her Halloween costumes that she always pulls out all the stops of Wonder Woman. Uh, speaking nice. of which, I found this the other day, Jewel. Uh, this hey, is something. Jewel, Jewel, is that a picture? Is that Rolando behind you or an elephant? <laughs> it's an elephant. No, oh, that's Rolando. <laughs> Rolando, the elephant. Wonder, Wonder Woman Barbie doll from Eons back. It used to be my ex girlfriend. I need that, Jeff. How much you want for it? It was my ex. She threw it at me and said she didn't want this anymore. So I oh, took geez. it. I, I collect junk. Get out of this. I don't care if I bring up an ex, but I'm taking Wonder Woman with me. I don't know. She's crazy. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to put the pics up on the website and we're going to put All them right. up. Um, <laughs> hey, here he is. <laughs> He's so mad at me. <laughs> Yeah, it's tough to get up. Uh, my wife does that too. She like yeah, jumps on it. Remember when I was younger? Remember, do I look anything like this guy? He's much more handsome. You look yeah. nothing like that guy. <laughs> he looks a little bit more like. Uh, wait, he looks a little bit like this guy. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the secret out. The secret oh, out. Well, that, is, that, that, is, is, that was great stuff. Um, so I want to thank you guys for taking the time out tonight and coming on and doing this with us. Uh, you know, the Yo Show Sports Club is what I'm calling you. We're trying to get more sports incorporated, and you guys did a terrific job tonight picking them. Like I said, we're going to post everybody's picks on the website. You can always, of course, watch the replay and uh, find out who we pick and find out who's going to be the big winner. I always brag about being a good sports guy. I was kind of putting my place tonight by you two, and I appreciate that. Well, who's going to win it all? Is that the big question? You want to answer that now? I don't know. No, no. No? I don't know. We don't oh, ask you. No, you, you got to let that first listen, round get out. And then I have become <laughs> so much more humble in picking because of the way I was manhandled in sports betting this year. I mean, 
picking i don't bet a lot of money because like being a mom and having a family like i do round robins parlays so i had in like nine game parlays 10 game parlays and i mean like there were games i wouldn't touch because i knew better but then the the giving games i was like are you kidding me like i was going to kill my parlay last year like tyler mary's a bitch should have got back on the field <laughs> like i was so mad he killed all my parlays it's just like so i'm very humble i say my picks and i smile and i nod and when i'm right then i'll brag but we'll Jeff, see. why don't we all have our one pick this week as our tie-breaking pick oh i like it all so right. you're saying, what, like you're our saying, overall yeah, our one you're right, right your one pick and it could be you, you can pick the same game i am because you know i'm going to give you a so, locks and cool cheese special oh so you want to do one do one lock. Do one game score. Do like score like a game to use like closest. Is that what you mean? Or like a game outright? No. Out of all six games, what game you like the most with the point spread? Oh, so kind of like a five oh, star okay. lock. Okay. Yeah. I like so, that. I, well, I want me to go first. I'll give you my locks and cream cheese special. Okay. I like it. <laughs> the Ram. Rams. Rams. The Rams. The Rams are your lock and cream cheese special. And I'm is. telling you what, if we do it on a one point system, that one. Is worth three points. If you I'll get the Rams, it. wow. I'll Ashley. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Do you think Rams are gonna cover? All right. I'm gonna go with what was the spread on the Eagle uh the Eagles? Uh, I wish. The Steelers. It was went up to six and a half. Six and a half. Six. Steelers six. Oh six. I'm sorry. I thought oh, six Steelers six. All right, I'll take Steelers six. No, okay. That's her box and cream cheese. Locks, I'm gonna go locks, cream cheese, the bagel, and the Italian salad, little Tabasco sauce, and a Garen goddamn tea Ooh. that the Buccaneers whip the ever loving shit out of the Washington football team. And I'm gonna even go a, a bonus point and say they win by at least 17. Wow, you're doing bonus. an alternative spread, okay? Bread and butter. I guess. Well, this is the locks and cream cheese. The cream cheese mm -hmm. is the spread, and the locks is the lock. All right. Big time. That's all written down, Joe. Yep. Yep. What? What, what was yours? <laughs> um, Ashley, I, you yours. No, I got yours. <laughs> no. Yeah, I said it. Yeah. Wrong. Rams by, what was the spread on the Rams? Uh, the Rams are a four point four, four and a half. Isn't it? I got everything. I got Rams are a four point underdog, and that's four Evans. Uh, okay, got it. Mega lock. You know what's like your best friends with Rolando for? 45 years of your life is torture. Well, now that's why you can be friends yeah, with Super Lando. Is back. <laughs> Girls, if you met him, you would have a good time. He's nuts. He <laughs> parties, he's funny. Girls, right? if you want a, a private session with Rolando Juarez, <laughs> just email us at the yo show 215 at gmail.com and we will hook you up with Super Lando himself. <laughs> Rolando <laughs> Juarez. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is it for the segment. Uh, like I said, we'll post the uh, we're going to post the picks on our website at www.theyoshow215.com tomorrow. We're going to list them uh, and uh, we're going to keep them on uh, Facebook so we uh, can follow along. Evan, Ashley, thank you very much for coming on this evening. This was outstanding. I had a blast. I Thanks really for having me. Oh, thank oh, you wow. both. You guys are both funny and informative and great picks. And get your buddy's picks that was missing. Put them up there. Yeah. Put them next week. Oh yeah, put them yeah. up, and don't forget to get the the bread and butter pick <laughs> <laughs> with the hot sauce. With the hot the lo sauce. Lox and cream cheese. Yes, love it. All right, guys, have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. All right, see you later, Ashley Mullen and Evan the Greek, ladies and gentlemen, with some fantastic picks tonight. Jewel it was awesome. That really was awesome. I enjoyed that thoroughly. It's cool. Yeah. What but there's there's like five you all agreed on. Like, holy, really? Holy. So that's that works. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know you got them all. I know you wrote them all down. I know you're thorough. I just didn't want to like put you on the spot there and start calling them all out with us there and might have led to some changes and who didn't like what pick. But I love them all. I thought that was great. Uh, Ashley and Evan. Uh, you can find them uh, hopefully in the future of more Yo Show sports type theme stuff, which, you know, we'll see what happened here and there. Uh, I know hockey starts next week, Jewel, and it's usually the time we bring in Mark Samaro uh, to do mm -hmm. hockey preview. I spoke to Mark. Um, 
gained a new job here as sports director of the show. And uh, even he said with like the mid season start, it's a little, a little off. It's, it's weird starting in January. Um, so we'll have Mark on for a hockey playoff preview. Like we do every year. He's terrific. He's a great hockey guy. And tonight we had a couple of great football people on Christian Rupert. Sorry, you did not make it with us, but we do. We want your picks. You are the third panelist. We want your picks. And what we're also going to do, Jewel, I just got this today. I'm uh, speaking with my brother and Christian. They're, they're both big on Super Bowl prop picks. Now, prop picks are who scores the first touchdown, who wins the coin flip, uh, all this stuff. So we're going to have my brother and Christian come on the Wednesday before the Super Bowl, and they're going to give you their best prop picks. I love prop picks. It's great stuff. Excellent. Yeah, I could bet on that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's like it gets everybody involved, and it's, and it's kind of funny because, man, Rolando War is big on the Saints, man, and and I'm not I'm not denying that. The only problem is they got to go to Green Bay. That's tough. Mm-hmm. But like, even my wife's like, oh, I could pick a coin flip. Like everybody, yeah. even if you're not a big sports fan, can get into the prop bets. There's just some great ones, and we're gonna do it special here on the Yo Show, a prop pick special before the Super Bowl. But there's gonna be guests, and we're gonna go through the guests because jewel we've been killing it with upcoming guests we are booked solid until march 3rd uh yeah. before i go anywhere jewel thank you for an excellent job at moderating uh it is your gig man you handled it called them out perfectly you dished out who goes next great you did a tremendous job i'm the van white of <laughs> you totally are and it's funny because evan said jewel you're you look like you're really having a blast jewel's not the avid sports follower, she knows a little bit about it. She's played, um, but she did a great job tonight. And it was actually her idea when I said, look, it looks like this segment's falling apart. She was like, no, you need to have this segment. You need to put it together. We are doing this and worked out great. So thank you to everybody again that uh, participated. It was excellent. Perfectly splendid. What's coming up on the Yo Show so very much? Of course, tonight was the great Nancy Valen. We come back to you next Wednesday. January 13th with an awesome Philly band, Moonroof, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. Join us here. <laughs> Jewel's a big fan, local Philadelphia artist. So you know if Jewel finds them and their local artists are going to be great because Jewel always hits a home run with the bands that come on the show. So we're looking very forward to seeing Moonroof. Jewel, you're going to be shocked when you see and hear what we got coming up the following week. <laughs> we got <a> <laughs> Finally. Oh. This poor guy, finally, after all these weeks, January 20th, another great Philadelphia artist, Maxwell Stern, will join us here on the Yo Show. Uh, Of course, as you know, we bring these bands on. We play a couple tunes from them. We talk about their music and Philly scene, and we always have a great time. Philly is a great hotbed for tremendous artists. And, of course, I include the likes of uh, Rachel Green and uh, Jody Valentine, uh, Bees, Lisa Orlando, just so many great people in our area that have been on our show. St. Rick is, of course, that does our theme music. So a lot of great, great artists. And they're worth seeing. They're worth checking out on our show. That's January 20th will be Maxwell Stern. Now, January 27th is the lovely Miss Jewel Tatey's birthday. And it's going to be celebrated as a national holiday. So we may not have an episode. We probably won't have an episode. Jewel has some plans lined up for her birthday. And we greatly respect that. Um, I also am not very happy with the feedback of some of the tremendous artists that I've asked to come on the day before for Jewel's birthday special. I'm trying so hard. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm going to get out of Dodge for a little. Shout out to you, Bishop Briggs, if you're watching. <laughs> Get get out of here. You shut up. You shut your mouth right now. That's the PR woman that I've been working with, and she said she was going to try, and, like, I've been pushing really shut hard. Up. Shut up. I'm, I'm pushing. Up. I'm pushing. I hope it happens. I do. I, I hope it happens. That's her true. PR woman says she's going to try. Her you know? No, she, we're, we're working on it. It's not you're a guarantee working. yet. You're working on it? I told her her PR woman did respond and said, we're going to try. I will cry. Don't, don't, don't get excited in case it doesn't happen. But if it does, I'm trying for you. We're trying. I, I'll lose my shit. <laughs> so that's Jules' birthday party. I did put the effort out. Her PR person says she's going to try. We would I, love to hear. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, I know. I know you would. I didn't even want to tell you the name in case it doesn't come true. That's how we used to do it on the old show back in the day. But um, mm. it, I got a PR. We'll try. That, that's all I got. So we're, we're trying right now. 
That'd be awesome. That's what I try to do for you. Um, another, another great guest that are guaranteed to come on our program, you already know, uh, February 3rd. Author Tiffany Mosher is going to join us. And Tiffany Mosher is the latest recipient of the Maxwell Stern Award, whose picture keeps disappearing off our list. <laughs> Damn it. Um, Tiffany has uh, a brand new book out. She's sending it to me and Jewel. So very excited for this. You know, we love merchandise. I'm a merchandise whore. I said earlier on the show. Um, February 3rd, author Tiffany Mosher on our program. February 10th. Very excited for this. A country music trio going by the name of New Moon Junction. Yeah. And another one of those great Canadian country bands, which we seem to love, like the great Susie Corey and, and uh, Dead South. Great. Right. Oh, yeah, Dead South. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Bree Taylor, who's mm -hmm. got two songs in the top 50. Congratulations to her. Just saw that. Well, well. so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, Pierre Lacroix. Uh, so <laughs> February 10th, country band New Moon Junction here on the O Show. Jewel, a couple uh, I've got over the last few days, and this one I'm very excited for. Uh, this young lady has a terrific social media following, adorable, great singer, tremendous dancer. You got to see this, this chick, you got to check her out. Her name is Olivia King, and she is like on the cusp of just becoming huge. Great picture of her, too. Look at that. Oh, that's cute. Big. It is cute. She is adorable. Um, she's a great singer. Uh, like people, people like compare her to Beyonce, which I like, and her dancing yeah, is Ariana. Look, yeah, and her, of course, and uh, she didn't answer. No, all right, all right. what? She... No, she didn't answer. <laughs> yeah, I will, <laughs> she didn't answer, but um, Olivia she King, <laughs> February 17th. Uh, great singer, great dancer. Check her out, too, on YouTube and, and Facebook and Instagram because her dancing videos are intense. She's outstanding. Uh, we Ooh. have just booked another one. February 27th, I like this very much. Actress Chanel Ryan is going to be with us on the program. Uh, just booked this one today. Uh, very awesome. You know, some people say, you know, DM me and let's collaborate. And I'm like, well, I'm DMing because I want to get to have you on the show. And within minutes, she's like, love to do it. Just don't book me anytime soon because I am busy as hell. And boom, there we go. February 24th. Uh, Jewel. And I yeah. need another open slot because I just got a, a yes from someone. Exciting. But we'll do the announcements next week. Exciting. No, we got to do it today. I got to hear it. I got oh, no, it. I can't. I can't. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta nail it down solid, or I, I can't oh, okay. announce. But Just, we'll talk after the show. All right, absolutely. <laughs> that makes, local artists, amazing. Amazing local artists. Make sure you text me right away because I'm very excited. Okay. Uh, we go into podcasting. More podcasters because I love my fellow podcasters. March third. This is a fun young lady. Uh, her name is Helen Edwards. She is an author. She is a yoga teacher. Uh, host and creator of Sexy Freedom Media. And for her, being sexy just means being free and living her best life. This is the book, Nothing Sexier Than Freedom by Helen Edwards. She's going to be on our show. We're going to talk about podcasting. We're going to talk about yoga. We're going to talk about her book. And then that following Tuesday, Jeff the Shark Perini will be a special guest on Sexy Freedom media podcast <laughs> I, I had to say that like i was getting tongue-tied but yeah so we have agreed to do like a show to show back to back kind of with the sports oh, just, just, just jeff on the sexy yoga podcast <laughs> i don't know I, I i am going to request jewel as well i actually didn't i was just so excited no I, I know you do yoga so that's so fine for me who doesn't dabble in yoga sometimes not only do i do yoga, yoga i do sexy freedom yoga because as you can Go see <laughs> we're gonna talk you no, know, there's like baby kangaroo yoga in Delaware that I really need to go to. <laughs> baby kangaroo, I've got to see baby that. Baby kangaroo, little joeys. Oh, that's cute. That's right. Oh, joeys yeah. are what you call baby kangaroos, correct? Yes, they are. That is so cute. Uh, shout out. I'm looking at the brand here. Um, 
they've become friends of our show and we've quickly become friends of their show. It is the, uh, the Hamilton brothers wow. at the hour with the Hamilton brothers. You can find them on all great media outlets. Of course, find them on Instagram and on Facebook. It's happy hour with the Hamilton brothers, two brothers who drink beers and talk about crazy topics, kind of like here on the Yo show. So check them out. They are a fantastic duo and uh, doing great things in the podcast world. Uh, for everybody who did participate in a podcast this evening, thank you. Look, not getting too deep into it, but we're here to entertain. This is our platform. We have agreed to be a part of it. Uh, we have sunk in our time, our money, our efforts to be part of this. So we appreciate you watching. We appreciate the people to come out and do it. Joel Tady. Oh, for sure. I want to thank everyone that came out. It's been such a great night. Um, yeah, we just love to be here and promote great artists, great actors, actresses, anyone in the entertainment field. Um, the sports segment was so much fun, and I know you were looking so much forward to that, so I'm glad you got to do it. That was that was great. Uh, I hope we can do more in the future. And, um, yeah, it'll, it'll only get better because this year is so ugh, with everything. But yeah. next year will be way better with it, just the games in general. So Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, once, and, yeah. and concerts because, you know what? There's like concert lineups happening. You know, yeah. Like My Chemical Romance is coming in the fall. Jimmy Buffett's coming in the summer. Take your boat out in Delaware and see Buffett. And I'm going to tell you this. Good. I'm going to tell you this, Joel. Um, and oh, thank you, Maria Daniels. We're not quite done yet. We're getting there. And uh, of course, yeah, we're going to work. In, uh, Maria is so funny. She is. I love her. We're going to book Maria on the show as well. So don't forget. So uh, March 3rd is our last. And then we're open March I think March 10th on Jewel might have one more nailed down and then yes. Murray and I will talk about a date uh, to have her on the show. Not about a date date. I've got a wife upstairs. She wouldn't appreciate it, even though you dig the sexy beard. But, uh, yeah. I, think it all night, man. I tell you what, I'm going to have like a mega Jeff's favorite female show with Jewel, of course, and Nancy Ballen and Maria Daniels and, Tina Trimper, and we'll bring back Bobby Brown and Erica Leniak and Betsy Russell and Madeline Zima, <laughs> and I'll be divorced the following day. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do love our female talents as well as our male talents. Uh, a massive thank you to Nancy Valen. Um, as great as I could hope for, I said we had her on years back and we did the old Block Talk Radio uh, segments. Um, the audio was scratchy. It was, it was kind of tough to hear. You didn't get the, you didn't get the best of Jeff because I just kind of all struck in the background, even though I couldn't see her. And tonight her face was right in front of me, and, and she's just darling. She's smiling and laughing and appreciative of being part of the trait. One to ten, how great was that? <laughs> One to ten? Uh, Eleven. Solid. <laughs> Eleven. Solid. Nancy Valen, like... You watch these people, and Jewel said it too, like um, Hal Sparks, Josh Server, like people you watch, you love them, you think oh, they're, yeah. they're so attractive, and then they come on, and you're just like, ah! And, you know, and we haven't even had a chance to see them. Like, we just talked to Hal and Josh. I didn't get to see them, and same with Nancy. So when Nancy came on the night, and I seen her pop up backstage, and you bring her on the screen, I like, for a moment, I kind of froze, like, I don't know. I, I mean, you grew up in the eighties. I grew up in the nineties. Like it's such, it was such a different time. We liked different shows, but they were everything to us, you know. Yes. When, when I had someone from all of that on, I was like, oh, oh <laughs> but to see them in person, it is so cool. And I'm so glad we get to do it on Streamyard. Thank you once again to Jimmy Starr for letting us know about this great site, and we love doing it for you. And we're here every Wednesday. Smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe. It's better to watch us on YouTube, honestly, than Facebook because we get more clout on Facebook. So it would be nice to transfer some of that to YouTube. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, it seems to be the measuring stick. And you hear stories about um, like PR people saying, you know, how many followers you got on YouTube? And you're like, well, I've got like nine. Whoops. I've got like 9,000 on Facebook. And we get, doesn't that mean anything? That's nice. No, what do you got on YouTube? I mean, son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, man. We're a top 50 pie. In case anybody forgot, it doesn't go away because 2020 is over. We were a we were voted top 50 by the Los Angeles and the New York Weekly Times. Like, we are a program. 
And Jewel Taney, as you know, was voted number one sexiest podcaster by Podcast Babe magazine. Two years oh, yeah. in a row now. Just pull that out. <laughs> Keep pointing that. Uh, let's do some man cave scores real quick. It's 10 13. It's kind of a weird time then. Let's go to 10 30. What do you think? Uh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I fed. My wife made chili tonight. It was outstanding, so I got a little bit of energy now. Oh, by the way, real quick, Key Billy Beer. No offense to Loso Brewing, because Loso Brewing is our sponsor. www.losobrewingcompany.com and canned beer coming out soon, folks. We're getting some cans lined up. So you're going to watch Jeff the Shark drink some cans here on the show. And uh, we're talking about working it. We're talking about working in some some like contest. Maybe we could win a four pack of Loso beer and a t-shirt. So stuff we'll look to in the future. Kind of stuff to get you to know, like Loso and the Yo show together. But we'll play that in the future. My brother just came back from Florida and him and his wife scored me a six pack of this. It's a Florida classic called Key Billy. Key Billy makes a uh, ale with key lime juice. It's called the Island Ale Jewel, and it is delicious. Ew. You know, it reminds me of that Dexter mm. episode. Dexter, I need some key lime pie. <laughs> no, it does. And now I'm like freaked out. I don't want to drink it ever again. That, no. that is, oh my God. That is Patty from The Leftovers. Dexter. Is it? Key lime pie. <laughs> oh, she's creepy. I met her. I met her in New York. She's She's great. And she's in The Handmaid's Tale. And Janine. Oh, The Handmaid's Tale. Creepy. Did that oh, end? Man. Did that end or just get canceled? No. Well, it, it just got pushed back because of this year. But yeah, we were supposed to get a new season. Wow. It's just not good. They just... Oh, oh, oh. I was about to give it away. Mm. <laughs> I got reminded by a few people that MySpace is back. It was announced here on the show. Back. Now back is Space Hay. So excited. Space I wonder. Space Hay. Yeah. Duck, the intern. You're supposed to know that, Duck. You're supposed to be our information super highway. I'm not supposed to be feeding you. You got to talk louder. You're part of the show now. My bad, Duck. You're, That's you're right. hashtag queen of the interns. You are <laughs> queen of the interns. We're going to find a way to link you up with a microphone or something, or even if you sneak in for a minute or two here on the phone or something, because you're going to be talking to us a lot. We saw your face a couple weeks ago. We're hearing your voice. You're like a full-fledged member of the Yo Show. The amazing, the amazing duck the intern. Available like every 30th. Oh my going on there? You can find Duck the Intern every 30th Wednesday here on the Yo Show whenever she decides to pop up and join us. It's a great program. What did you say? It wasn't. What? Uh, I messed up a lot tonight. <laughs> I what did she do? Run down your corrections? Is she like the stat guy that gives you the corrections? Yes, and I was dead wrong. <laughs> oh my! Hit us with it. What were you dead wrong about? It's not. Mm. What? Nope. <laughs> it wasn't the same person. Forget it. Oh, okay. But that's it's just, you know how HBO and Showtime they kind of use the same people. So I just thought yeah. they like filtered through. You know, with the Canadian shows like Schitt's Creek and Letterkenny, they they use the same actors because they're all in Toronto. You know what I mean? So is that true, Duck? I can't confirm. Can't <laughs> confirm. <laughs> she will though. Tune in next week. Tune in next week when Duck the intern tells us everything we did wrong the week before. That's a segment. That's a new segment. What we did wrong last week. Duck the intern. That's, that's good. <laughs> I like it because I love knowing what I say wrong. Um, I noticed, <laughs> you know, no offense, we had a great panel, but Ashley Mullen called Derek Henry Stefan Henry. But hey, these things happen. <laughs> hey, dude, I like Ashley. I do. Very cool. Um, like I said, she's just, like big into fantasy football and she made it to the championship and lost. And we've talked a lot of football this season. That's why I knew she'd be pretty cool for the segment. Uh, let's do a quick thing of man cave scores because I cleaned out a cabinet and these are like archive man cave scores. I know this is Jules' favorite part of the show when I bust out my crap. And uh, one of the things I found here, Jewel, was a copy of the 2008 World Series from the oh. Phillies. This is the year they won it. A World Series program. Look at this bad boy. Isn't that awesome? Chase Utley, folks. Oh, that's awesome. Prime. Is that holographic? By the TV? Yeah, the Phillies thing? Um, that is a good call. Is that's it holographic? Cool. No, it's not. Look I what I have. have. <laughs> Joel Tady with a score. Let's see it. 2015 Collector's Edition. Who's on this? 
Look, it's Ledge. Oh, oh, that is the Pride of the Phillies. Oh, they do, they do it every year. They do a Pride of the Phillies like poster. Yeah. I've never gotten one, and that is cool. Yeah, I, I have to find a frame for it, but it's like propped up against my TV. I'm jealous of that. Yeah, they do it every year, the Pride of the Phillies uh, posters, and it's always different players through the years, and it's very cool. I'm a little jealous. I'm like, jealous. now i got to stop Man Cave scores because a, a girl's got a better piece of sports memorabilia than I do. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Joe, look what I found in that. I bought this at a yard sale. And I forgot I had it. I bought this years ago. Uh, it's Nirvana. And it is a box. Oh, yeah. It's a box set. I never even knew this like existed until I found this at a yard sale. And then I put it away. Never went back to it and found it for the first time like in eight years. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yeah, I've seen, you know, I've seen them at yard sales. I, I tried so hard not to buy CDs anymore. I'm like, because I had so many CDs and so many box sets. Oh, yeah. But all my CD, especially college, man, I would still bring out the boom box and the CDs yeah. and all the scratch. You're in the middle of a party. I was like, ever, ever. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> you rid of CDs. Yeah, I actually, found, um, I don't use it. I don't use it. I just, I mean, I, I, paid, yeah, five, cool. I paid five bucks for this. Like, how can you turn that down? You can't. Um, the new edition, the 2021 edition of the Spin Master Batman and DC figures are out. I, of course, scored the Joker. Oh, that's cool. They don't have like a pompadour. What is that? He does. He's um, he's like the South Philly Joker. Oh. Hey, yo. Hey, forget about it, Batman. Look at this pompadour over here. Creepy. He's got the... Uh... There's so many different versions of the Joker. And I'm here for them all. I like them. Um, I was asked, it was funny, Ashley said it, so maybe we'll do this down the road. Ashley wants to do a best Batman. So I think we do best Batman, best Joker one of these weeks. I want to hear everybody's input. What, like costume? No, who was the better actor? Because we all know Christian Bale's the best Batman. But like Jared Leto, you can't compare Jared Leto to like Heath Ledger because he's so, like it's just a different version. It's like you can't compare like you know, you to any other podcasting team. <laughs> no Michael offense. Keaton to Christian no Bale, like, right. they just don't. It's a different times, a different era. Like, you know what I mean? So, but, but people get animate. Like, people actually get angry about it. Like, <clears throat> like Ashley said today that Keaton was the best, followed by Adam West, and she didn't even like Bale. Like, how do you not like Bale? Easily the best Batman. Oh, he doesn't like Bale at all. No, doesn't like Bale at all. Don't do that. See, I like, like I like Jack Nicholson just as much as Heath Ledger, just as much as Jared Leto. Like I like them all. I even like the one they did for the show, the kid from uh, Shameless, the redhead kid. Oh, he was so good. I mean, God, yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways to play Batman and to play Joke and really to play Wonder Woman, and I, that's. What my big beef was that it just had Gail and Wonder Woman is so many different things for so many different people. Like, I liked Wonder Woman because she wasn't a twig because she was this buxom broad who was kicking ass, and they have some skinny girl playing her. Like, it, it, we need some variation in the role. Is is what I'm saying. I think Gail's good. I think she's not like twig like. I think she's got a little. <laughs> she's fine, but she's had her day. Like, let someone else. She's not fine. Henry Cavill is the best on that. Yeah. Since, since, uh, what's his name? Christopher, what's his name? Reeves is the best Superman, I feel. You're saying Christopher Reeves is the best Superman. Christopher Reeves is a great Superman, and so yeah. is Henry Cavill. Uh, he's he's yeah. good. He's good. No, he is good. Character to a T. Christopher Reeves, for me, is the essential. Uh, that other clown. That's that, who we grew up with. That other clown that's that's in the middle. That's who we grew up with. Right. Who was the other one? Brandon Ruth or Brandon? Oh, I like him. Oh, did you really? Yeah. Did you ever see Scott Pilgrim? <laughs> did I ever see what? <laughs> he plays the funniest part in Scott Pilgrim versus the world. I have not it's seen it. It's on Netflix. You better watch it because it's hilarious. And he plays this like. Oh, Stefan Henry. I thought, you, I thought she said Stefan Henry. I'm sorry. I'm like, oh my God, it's called Stefan Henry. Yeah. Stefan Henry. I like that. Though. That's actually a very cool nickname. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley, while you're here, I just want to let you know that me and Jewel agree that Christian Bale is the best Batman ever. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you're so I kind of agree. It's fine. Ashley, 
We do love you. I thought you called him Stefan. Hey, what about Edward from Twilight? He's going to be coming on. He's going to be the worst Batman. Batman ever. I don't know. Ever. Version. You know, I like the old, like, Christian Bale. I just had this conversation. Christian Bale should have played Ben Affleck's part in Batman vs. Superman and Justice League as that old beat-up Batman that's like, you know, and he passes it on Darkwing and everything, and he, he should have just kept on with the role. It's sad that he didn't. But she, she's all about Michael Keaton. Has her day. I think when it comes to um, Twilight there being Batman, I think Ben Affleck is like a award-winning Batman compared to what this is going to be. Ben Affleck sucks ass as Batman. I'm that's, sorry. That's how bad this next one's going to be. Ben Affleck will be better. Val Kilmer will be better. Ben George Affleck Clooney is might be better. Keanu Reeves. Of Batman. I think Keanu Reeves. Arnold Schwarzenegger of Batman. I'm Batman. Whoa, Ed. I'm Batman. I'm going to like imitate all these great stars being Batman. Christopher Walken. We should. Well, Bobby you know, my. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, go ahead. I, Christopher, okay. Christopher Walken is Batman. Uh, as you know, I am Batman. I am the Dark Knight. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I have a cave. <laughs> I, I've got this cape. It's long. I live in a back cave. I am Batman in my Don, bat Donald cave. Trump is Batman. Everybody, I am, in fact, Bat and Man. I am the Bat and the Man together. When I put my co costume on with my cape and my Batmobile, I become huge. I am easily the toughest man ever. I know more about Gotham City criminals than the police do. Believe me. Ozzy Osbourne is Batman. <laughs> uh, I, I, I believe I'm fucking Batman. Oh, sorry. I, I might be Superman. <laughs> and I'm not sure. Sharon, what man am I? I, I, I think I'm shit my pants, man, right now. I need to change my diaper. Oh, oh that's great. Pretty good. Thank you. You didn't know I could do um, half ass. Pee <laughs> What's that? Pee Wee Herman is Batman. <laughs> I'm trying to go to the bad game. <laughs> I know you're the Joker, but what am I? <laughs> uh, oh man, that was that was. I like, love it. I could talk DC all night. I know you can, and that's good. I, I like DC. I, I like Marvel. I like them all. I, I like them. You know, I like them both. Damn. Oh, I forgot to show you the last piece from the man cave. I came across this. I don't even know how I got this. And it's kind of my competition. I was always jealous of this because I wanted to do this one day on my own show and I couldn't. From 2013, it is a Preston and Steve totally office calendar. Remember these? Isn't that everything you stand against? <laughs> oh, yeah. I hate Preston and Steve. I hate the fact that they get women to do their calendar. I, you know, there's a couple of cute women in here. But this I is like. I don't that here. This is a. <laughs> Are they naked in that? No, no, they're, oh, okay. they're clothed. The girl on the covers got a little under boob going. Hmm. But other than that, year? what's that? Is that this year? It's 2013, man. Are you not listening? 2013. No, I don't. I don't buy this. somebody. I think my brother got this and left it in my house, and it ended up in this big box of stuff. I'm not really a fan of Preston or Steve. I find them be. I'm very unhumorous. <laughs> I listen to Press and Steve. I also uh, like see, sorry, Mom. Show. Sorry, Mom, for, for having that smut on my show. See? The show that brought you Brianna Dale dying to be on the bikini. I don't know what happened there. Dropped the ball for the first time in my life. <laughs> no, you know, it's like a close race between Brianna Dale and Cherry Nelson. Like, who has the highest viewer? I, they're both, like, at the same number. Yeah, like 3,700 and some on YouTube and another couple thousand on, on Facebook and, and like big numbers, man. And, but here's the difference, Jewel. Sherry Nelson says she likes my legs. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't give you the upper hand, I don't know what does. No, like no. It, that kind of does my, it. Am I like sending us off for you? Like putting the music in the background? But it is anyway, uh, just about time to say goodnight. And I get so sad when Wednesday night ends because I love 
doing the O show. I love the great guests that come on and comment. And I love the people that come on the show. Uh, new fan, new friends you made tonight. Ashley Mullen, Evan Horn. Thanks for coming on Christian Rupert. Uh, we still want your picks, dude. You didn't get away that easily. If you're watching, we want your picks. I know he, uh, he showed me his computer screen. He was frozen. He couldn't get on. It really stinks, but, uh, Aww. we're going to do that in great stuff next week. Again, we come back Wednesday night, eight o'clock moon roof ladies and gentlemen next week so some brand new hot philly tunes that we're going to be playing here on the yo show and talking to the dudes about the philly music scene what they've been doing how they've been staying creative during covid jewel's going to gush because she loves local artists so it's just going to be a fantastic show so tune in next week eight o'clock massive thanks to my girlfriend of all time i, I still have red cheeks Nancy Valen, you were gorgeous. You were informative. You were fun. We love you, and we want to have you back real soon. Thank you, Nancy, for coming on. And thank her husband, uh, Nels Van Patten, of the famous Van Patten acting family. That's her husband. He came on and uh, gave us his football picks from the background. That was very cool as well. Yeah. So big thanks. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, that's it for the year show. Uh, extended extra half hour of fun for you this evening. We'll see you next week. Stay safe out there, everybody. Bundle up because it's getting cold. Stay away from Washington, D.C. if you can. Avoid it at all costs. Yeah, <laughs> stay safe. Stay home. Yeah, stay home. That's a great idea. Stay home and watch the Yo Show. This repeat, like Jules said, is archived. It goes on forever. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> i tell you what, folks. She's not only informative and she not only does 50% of the work here, but she's freaking adorable. Jewel, sister from another Mr. Tatey. We absolutely love you. Duck the intern was with us tonight. Thank you, Duck, for coming on. You need, you need you. a sign-off tag. What's your sign-off tag? What, what's your bodega sign? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> what you, you say at the end. At the end like, that that should say, be it. Jeff says, don't be a douche. And then I nice. say, be nice to people, even the shitty ones. And then you say, you know what? I'll figure it out and I'll come back Wednesday. You know what? I'll figure it out and I'll come back Wednesday. <laughs> That's your tagline. I like it. I'll figure it out and I'll come back Wednesday because basically what she does is critiques our mistakes, figures it out, and then comes back the following Wednesday and beats us up. We love it. Duck the intern. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next week. We're going to take you out with the music of St. Ricketts for Fire Cannot Burn. www.stricketts.com. Until next week, Jeff the Shark Perini reminding you all. Don't be a douche. Be nice to people, even the shitty ones. Especially the shitty ones, because they are running rampant. Oh! Good night, you oh, oh. world. Whoa. <laughs>
kindly answer this was the point of it just to reach new heights of love. So I'm pulling the anchor and trailing.